A Sudden Spark, written by Lewin Y. Ho, narrated by Sky Alley. Chapter 1. Brandon. Brandon Spark ran his arm across his forehead, catching the beads of moisture gathered there. He groaned. The bookstore had turned up the air conditioning to compensate for the mid-June heat wave, yet he was still sweating. He closed his eyes and tried visualizing his happy place, the quiet sanctuary of his study where he worked. Outside the window, birds sang a cheerful tune. Inside, a candle burned with his favorite citrus scent. He placed himself in the picture and felt the tension in his shoulders melt away, until some high-pitched screams penetrated his bubble. Yikes. His eyes popped open. This could mean only one thing. His fans were already arriving for today's meet-and-greet. It was a good thing he had set multiple alarms to make sure he'd gotten here early. The author event wasn't set to start for another 20 minutes, but there they were, fast approaching the corner of the store where he sat behind a small table. His heart began racing again at the thought of socializing for the next hour. How he longed for solitude. His fingers itched to get back to his laptop. Just hours earlier, he had been downing his third cup of coffee while he worked on his latest novel. He was right on schedule to finish the story, if he could only find a way to end it. He needed something better than, and they lived happily ever after. His readers wouldn't be happy with a generic ending like that. After successfully publishing ten romance books within the last two years, one would think he'd have this genre down. Actually, he did. He could plot out character profiles, story arcs, and conflict resolution in his sleep. His imagination had always been his strong suit ever since he was a kid, whereas his four brothers excelled in talent, humor, strength, and charm, he majored in dreams. Daydreams, to be exact. He'd been the kid who lived at the library while his brothers played outside. As they grew up, he became the teenager who made up his own stories and scribbled them down in his journals instead of going out on dates. Now, at age 31, he created stories in the comfort of his two-bedroom condo in a suburb outside of San Francisco. Not much had changed, except that he now made money selling books to eager women looking for happily ever afters. Which was why he needed this book to end the way his readers liked in a swoon-worthy yet believable way. Brandon leaned back in his chair and released a heavy breath. He hated reading stories that didn't have a happy ending, but he also hated romance that made love seem easy and cheap. He'd grown up in a Christian home and knew all the Bible verses about love by heart. The passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that listed the attributes of love was one of his favorites. He had witnessed his parents' marriage, 35 years next month, and how earnest and committed they were to each other. That's the kind of love he hoped to portray in his books. His one problem, though? He had never experienced a relationship like that. Or any serious one, for that matter. A young blonde woman appeared at Brandon's side. Don't worry, Bran. You're going to do great. I'm praying for you. Thanks, Danica. He squeezed out a grateful smile in response to the store owner's sympathetic one. He took several deep breaths, hoping to tame the anxiety gnawing at his chest. I really appreciate you having me here again. As hard as these in-person events are, I know they're good for me and my sales. They're good for the store, too. I ordered an extra box of your books for today since we sold out last time. She gave his arm a friendly squeeze. I brought some extra makeup wipes, too, in case the ladies get a little overzealous with the kissing. He winced, remembering the lipstick stains Danica had insisted on wiping off for him at his last book signing. He'd appreciated her effort, but the gesture had been too close for comfort. He didn't want her getting the wrong idea about their friendship. That's why he had come prepared this time. He took out a small pack of wipes from his pocket. Thanks, but I can clean myself up today. You'll likely have your hands full with all the purchases. A hurt look crossed Annika's face, but she quickly composed herself and nodded. Yeah, that's a good idea. She backed up and gestured to the small crowd gathering before them. I'll tell everyone to have a seat. We'll start when you're ready. Brandon nodded gratefully, then wiped at the sweat on his brow again. Buzz. 
His cell phone sitting on the table vibrated with an incoming call. Number one flashed across the screen. A sense of relief fell on him to see the familiar words. Aiden, thanks for calling. Hey, bro, of course. The smooth voice of one of America's hottest boy band members came over the line. His older brother, Aiden, had held that title as a teenager, but recent events in his life, specifically a woman, had brought him back to the limelight. Are you at the bookstore already? I'm here, trying my best not to faint, although that sounds like a good option right about now. Aiden scoffed. Don't worry, you're gonna do great. Isn't this your third signing? You're a pro by now. It's my fourth, and I'm nowhere near being a pro. I do everything my therapist told me to do. Take omega-3s, deep breathing, visualizing, but my body still goes into fight-or-flight mode. Brandon rubbed his chest to ease the tension building there. I wish I could handle public speaking like you do. You thrive on stage. I barely make it out alive. Hey, you're not helping yourself by thinking like that. Getting stuck in negative thoughts only pulls you down further. Have you prayed about this? Unloaded your worries to the Lord? That helps me with my nerves before a performance. One corner of Brandon's mouth curved up. It was both surprising and comforting to hear Aiden talk like this. After a decade of trying to help his brother renew his faith in God, the tables had switched. Now Aiden was the one encouraging him. I haven't yet, but thanks for the reminder. Just returning the favor, he quipped with a smile in his voice. Is this signing at Danica's bookstore again? Yeah, it is. She's really good about supporting indie authors. I got quite a few readers from the last one I did here. Are you sure she's not just good at supporting one author in particular? Brandon raised a brow. His brother had been making a lot of implications about Danica lately. He guessed Aiden's girlfriend Abby was encouraging him in the background, since she and Danica were best friends. He lowered his voice as he reiterated, Like I told you before, there's nothing going on between us. You're not interested in her at all. She's a great girl, a solid believer, and you both love to read. I know, she's great. I just don't see her that way. She doesn't make me feel the way Abby makes you feel, you know? Brandon paused, trying to grasp the right words. Like, time stops when the two of you are together, and nothing else matters. Silence ensued, followed by a soft chuckle. A year ago, I would have said you're a hopeless romantic, but... I actually understand what you mean now. You're right. You can't force yourself to feel something for a person, no matter how great they are or how much they may like you. You can't. Believe me, I've thought about it. I was flattered she would even consider me, but I think she'd be happier with someone like Darren. She's always talking about the alpha heroes I write, how strong and brave they are. That's Darren in a nutshell, not me. In fact, Brandon based many of his male characters off their younger firefighter brother. I'm going to find a way to get them together. Danica had been so kind to him, ever since the first time he had called the store about stocking his books. If anyone deserved a happy ending, she did. His hardworking, sacrificial brother deserved a good woman in his life, too. You're playing matchmaker in real life now? Aiden laughed. Well, if you think Darren's the guy for her, you have your work cut out for you. Have you forgotten his vow of celibacy? No, but I believe in miracles. The four of us prayed for you for years, brother, and look what God did. If he could turn your stubborn heart around, he teased. Anything is possible. Aiden laughed loud and long. You know what? I'm going to start praying for you, Bran. There's a perfect woman out there. Someone who's going to surpass all the fictional women you've created in your mind. And when you meet her, it's going to blow all your romance stories out of the water. I appreciate it, but you're going to have to pray hard. Real hard. It wasn't that Brandon doubted God's power or faithfulness, but it would take something or someone extraordinary to surprise him. The truth was, he had already met the perfect girl in college. A decade later, and he still couldn't shake his memories of her. Nothing could compare to the romance he had written for them in his mind. The one thing he hated about having an overactive imagination? Nothing in real life ever seemed as bright or warm and fuzzy. 
That's why he'd likely only fall in love in his books. Unless his path crossed again with the first and only woman he had ever kissed. Chapter 2 Bria Bria Montgomery checked the clock as she came to a stop at a signal light. 2.55. She had about five minutes to reach her son's elementary school, and a mile-long stretch of cars blocked her way. Great. Of all the days to be late, it had to be the one day when she needed to rush across town for an appointment. She glanced over at her friend Amy in the passenger seat. How could she break the news to her that they were running late? I'm guessing we're stuck in traffic. The brunette sitting in the passenger seat asked as she adjusted her sunglasses. I can hear you grinding your teeth, which means you're frustrated. Am I right? Bria cracked a smile. Amy might be blind, but she could pick up on all the little details that didn't require sight. Even after knowing her for two years, Bria was still surprised at how sharp her friend's spidey senses were. I can't hide anything from you, woman. And yes, we are so stuck. At this rate, we'll be late for the book signing. She rubbed her temples and frowned. If only she had gotten off work earlier and arrived at Amy's at their agreed-upon time. Then they wouldn't be late picking up Seth. I'm so sorry. I know how important this is to you. I shouldn't have agreed to color Mrs. Jones's hair when I knew I didn't have enough time. Hey, don't worry about it. As long as I get my book autographed, I'll be happy. Bria released a long breath. Thanks for understanding. After what seemed like the world's longest light finally changed, she stepped on the gas. She eased her way down the road and into the school parking lot. Tailing the minivan in front of her, she entered the car line and scanned the sidewalk for signs of her mini-me. She immediately spotted the blonde locks of her nine-year-old son. His head was buried in a book, as usual. She pulled up to the curb and opened the back window of her old sedan. Sweetie, come on, get in the car. Seth's head jerked up. His blue eyes shone as he hopped into the car with his backpack and closed the door. Hey, Mom. Are we still going to the bookstore? That's the plan. She quickly maneuvered the car back onto the main street, accelerating as they drove away from the school. Eyes focused on the road, she called out to Seth over her shoulder. Remember your manner, Seth. Please say hello to Miss Amy. Hi, he mumbled. He slumped in his seat and returned to reading his book. Bria couldn't help sighing. Seth seemed unable to speak more than one syllable at a time to anyone outside of their immediate family. The way his face flushed in embarrassment reminded her of the bright pink dye she had used on a client that morning. She knew there wasn't anything wrong with his communication skills, other than the fact that he took a long time to warm up to people. She just didn't understand it. How had she given birth to someone so unlike herself? As a hairstylist, she talked to all kinds of people, male, female, young, old, on a daily basis. She wasn't a total social butterfly, but she also wasn't as timid and shy as Seth. Neither was his father, she mused with a wry expression. She pushed that thought aside. He was the last person she cared to think about. Bria eyed her friend instead. At the rate they were moving, they'd likely miss the reading portion of the meet and greet. She tried to spot any traces of disappointment on Amy's face. There were none, but guilt still weighed heavily on her chest. She hated disappointing people. She also knew she couldn't please everyone. As a single mom, she had learned the hard way she wasn't as strong, brave, or fast as the superheroes her son adored. But that didn't mean she couldn't try her darndest to be close to one. I'll make sure the author doesn't leave the store until you get your book signed even if I have to tackle him. Amy threw her head back, her body shaking with laughter. I have no idea what he looks like, but I'm willing to bet he's as hunky as the men he writes. I'd like to hear the sound of his chiseled body hitting the floor when you throw him down. Huh? I bet he works out by bench-pressing stacks of books, Bria smirked. She cocked her head to one side as she thought out loud. You know, I've never met an author before, but I've wondered about them. How do they get ideas for their stories? Do they base their characters off themselves? I bet reading a story they wrote is like getting a glimpse inside their soul. When you think about it, that could be either pretty interesting or really scary. Amy grinned. The ones I've met seem pretty normal. 
I am curious about this one, though, since he's a guy. They're a rare breed in the romance world. But I think male or female, they just need to have a good imagination and understand people well, especially the opposite sex. Romance authors are experts on love? Of course. How else would they be able to write such swoon-worthy stories? Amusement lifted the corners of Bria's mouth. She'd never have imagined the serious woman she befriended at a Bible study would be an avid reader and blogger of romance. Not that she had anything against the genre, but she figured anyone who read or wrote it had to live behind rose-colored glasses. Real people were hardly as beautiful or as muscular as the books made leading women and men out to be. And real relationships were never as fluffy or smooth, complete with happy endings. She should know. Her own experiences with romance were anything but romantic. Having grown up as a pastor's kid in an ultra-conservative Christian family, she hadn't been allowed to hang out with the opposite sex, much less date. So when she went away to college and finally got her first taste of freedom, she, in her mother's words, went wild. She had reined in her curiosity the first three years, but during her final year of school, she had made up her mind to have fun. She'd sought out the wrong crowd, partied too much, and ended up flunking out of school. That wasn't the worst part, though. When she returned home, she found out she was two months pregnant. Anger was only the tip of the iceberg of her parents' reaction. Underneath it, fear and shame forced her father to step away from the pulpit. Soon after, sorrow weakened his body and he became ill. Since then, her family treated her and Seth as pariahs. Bria understood the consequences of disappointment. She had let so many people down. Most of all, she had let God down. But she'd been doing her best to make up for her sins. She volunteered in the children's ministry program on Sunday mornings. She offered free haircuts to homeless folks once a month at the salon where she worked, and she did little things for her friends whenever possible. Most recently, she had been recording herself reading books out loud, then uploading the videos online for Amy to enjoy. Today's good deed was playing chauffeur for her friend, so she didn't have to take the bus to see her new favorite author. I'll be sure to give you a detailed description of what this guy looks like. I can't wait to get a good look at him myself. Amy pursed her lips. I thought you wrote off guys a long time ago. Something to do with being independent and not needing a man. I did? I'm only looking at this one for your sake, Bria quipped. And to see what kind of man would be brave enough to write such sentimental mush. You know you like that stuff. You read romance with so much emotion. I much prefer listening to you narrate them than a professional. Although I do appreciate the fact that Mr. Spark has his whole backlist available in audio versions. It makes things easier for you. I know how much time it takes you to record a whole novel. Bria's ears perked up. Why did that name sound familiar? Did you say Spark? Any relation to that other romance author whose books got made into movies? No way. Amy wrinkled her pert nose. That author writes love stories. Romance stories guarantee a happy ending. Love stories don't. Brandon Spark is all about happily ever afters. He writes the best kissing scenes, too. I see, she remarked hesitantly. She snuck a peek at Seth in the mirror and was relieved to see his eyes glued to his fantasy book. Whenever he got into a story, he tended to tune out the rest of the world. It was safe to say he wasn't paying attention to her and Amy's conversation. She doubted if he even noticed girls yet, but she didn't want to risk piquing his interest. She prayed it would be many, many years before she'd need to bring up the topic of dating, marriage, and, gulp, babies. Do you want to read his latest book? Amy handed her the copy she had been clutching to her chest. I only bought it for this signing. I have the audio version already. If you want to borrow it, go right ahead. Just promise you'll keep it safe. No earmarking pages, please. I guess it wouldn't hurt to skim through. Bria took the hardcover book and dropped it in her lap. She switched lanes to the right as she prepared to turn into the back entrance of a small strip mall. A minute later, she found a parking space right in front of a brick building with a sign that read, Between the Lines. She exhaled in relief and announced, We made it! Come on, Seth, you can bring your book inside to read. 
It's time to make Miss Amy's dream come true. Amy was already standing outside the car, white cane in hand. Come on, guys, she urged before she closed the door. Bring the book for me, Bria. Bria rolled her eyes. She had never seen her friend move so fast. It appeared there was something magical about this store because her son was also moving at warp speed. He stood next to Amy, motioning for her to join them. With one hand on the door handle, she picked up the book in her lap and proceeded to exit. Her heart just about stopped when her gaze fell on the photo on the jacket's back. Could it be? She leaned closer for a better look. A familiar face from her past stared back at her. She recognized the shy, closed mouth smile and vivid blue eyes that used to greet her every morning in the dorm cafeteria. The angled jaw and broader shoulders, however, were new. Still, there was no doubt in her mind who he was. Bria swallowed hard. She was wrong. This man was the last person she wanted to think about, much less see. He reminded her of everything she had tried to leave behind. There was no escaping now, though. Not when one step inside the store would immerse her in the shame and guilt of her past again. Chapter 3 Brandon Brandon's jaw dropped as he took in the crowd gathering before him. Women of various ages and backgrounds were staking claim on the plastic folding chairs, especially the row closest to him. They all stared starry-eyed as they clutched copies of his latest book to their chests. He gulped. T-minus one minute until everyone would be vying for his undivided attention. His heart rate picked up speed just thinking about it. It was moments like this that he wished he could be any one of his four brothers. Even from a young age, he had realized how different he was from them. A framed photo hanging in his parents' house proved it. The picture was his mom's favorite, one she had taken in the backyard of their Silicon Valley home on a hot and sticky summer day much like today. Aiden, the oldest, sat with his prized possession, a guitar in his hands. Colin, the third brother, made silly faces at the camera. Darren, the fourth brother, had his legs straight up in the air as he did a handstand. The youngest spark, Evan, wore his Halloween costume from the year before, even though the cape was two sizes too small and looked like a bib flying on his back. Then there was himself, the only golden child of the bunch, Blonde and blue-eyed, sitting cross-legged on the grass with his nose stuck in a book. Brandon remembered that 13-year-old version of himself well. After the discovery of growth on his upper lip, he started noticing the opposite sex. The sweet lilt of a girl's voice, the way she giggled when talking to a boy, and how awesome she smelled when she passed by and swung her hair in his direction. The emotions his female classmates evoked in him made them the most fascinating creatures God had ever created. He began observing and admiring them, from a distance, of course. That's also when he started watching movies with his mom, specifically chick flicks, that taught him all about the ways boys meet girls and fall in love. Soon after, he began writing his own fictional takes on love. Sure, it was his dream to find love someday— but that would mean venturing beyond the comfort of his home and talking to a woman face to face. If he had Aiden's stage presence, Colin's humor, Darren's confidence, or Evan's charm, he'd have no problems getting a date. But, alas, God had gifted him with sweaty palms and an annoying stutter that appeared at the least opportune times, especially at book signings. There was nothing remotely cool about him, except for a little tattoo on his back that he had gotten on a whim in college. Suddenly, applause along with hoots and hollers filled the room as Danica introduced him. Swallowing hard, Brandon lifted his head to greet the audience. His face on fire, he gave a tentative wave. Th thank you all for coming today. I'm very fortunate to have so many wonderful and supportive readers. With shaky hands, he picked up his book from the table and turned to the bookmark page. I'll start by reading an excerpt from my latest story. I'm on page 23 if you'd like to follow along. Pages ruffled as everyone opened their books. Brandon blew out a long breath. The fewer eyes on him, the better. He almost preferred this part of the event to the individual interactions he would have with the women later. That's when he'd have to field all their questions, many of them personal. 
Did he base any of the characters on people he knew? How did he understand women so well? Did he have a girlfriend? Why didn't he have a girlfriend? His readers were wonderful, but also way too curious. Clearing his throat, he focused on the black text. He began reading, stumbling over the words as his throat constricted. His heart pounded so loudly he could barely hear himself over the thumps. He snuck a look at the audience and felt a little better to see them following along in their books, with pleased smiles on their faces. They were here to support him, he reminded himself, not to tease or bully him. Drawing upon their support as well as the pure joy of doing something he loved, Brandon pressed on. It got easier because he truly was grateful for this gift of the written word that God had given him. After two pages, he began finding a groove as he immersed himself in the story. He found purpose with each word he read. The intentions and emotions behind the dialogues he had written came to life. Sure, these were places and people he had created in his mind, but they felt as real to him as the people sitting before him. It was during these times that he understood the rush his youngest brother talked about experiencing whenever he was in front of a camera. It was fun and exciting to embody a character totally unlike yourself. Brandon imagined if he wasn't so introverted, he might have become an actor like Evan. Oohs and ahs filled the pauses between his sentences. They were getting to the meet-cute, where the main characters would cross paths for the first time. Brandon loved this scene with all its anticipation— there was nothing like the tender moment when a woman and a man experienced the sudden spark that made it hard to tear their eyes away from each other. He paused dramatically as he reached the pivotal moment, then delivered the most swoon-worthy line, This might sound crazy, but I plan on marrying you. I know we just met, but I'm going to woo you until you say yes. A collective gasp filled the room, and a woman exclaimed, That is so sweet! then promptly fell to the ground. The younger woman next to her waved her arms about frantically. My mama! She fainted! Someone help! She has a weak heart! Brandon rushed to his feet, fresh beads of cold sweat breaking out on his forehead. This was a first? No one had ever lost consciousness at one of his events before? And to think he was the cause of it? He'd never forgive himself if this reader was hurt. He needed to get help. Fast. Pulling his phone out of his jean pocket, he hit the speed dial set for Darren's cell phone. His brother answered on the second ring. Hey, Bran. Everything okay? I need you at the bookstore on the corner of Castro and Villa. There's a woman here in need of medical help. With no further explanation needed, Darren answered. We'll be right there. Moments passed as Brandon stood helplessly on the sidelines. He ran his hands through his hair, unsure of how to help. Soon the wail of a fire truck sounded in the distance. The siren grew louder and louder, adding to the frantic energy in the room. When it was at its loudest volume right outside the store, it stopped. Several uniformed firefighters pushed through the front doors with their gear in tow. Relief washed over Brandon as he saw the tallest man, his brother Darren, take quick, long strides toward the crowd gathered on the floor. The women all gasped as he neared and cleared a path for him. He dropped to his knees and began assessing the situation. The woman who had fainted suddenly came to when Darren lifted her hand to take her pulse. She clutched his arm and almost passed out again at the sight of him. Brandon shook his head in awe. In the eight years since his brother had been working as a first responder, he had never actually seen him in action. But now that he was observing Darren, he understood why his readers loved the male characters he wrote. They were bigger-than-life men— the kind who rescued damsels in distress. And here was one in the flesh, his kid brother who used to drive their mom crazy when he belched at the dinner table. Except now, Darren was all grown up in stature and maturity. Even though he was the second youngest Spark brother, he towered over the rest of them. He was now an alpha male in every sense of the word, strong and in charge. While Brandon couldn't even handle public speaking without the fear of a panic attack, his brother faced life-and-death situations with ease. No wonder women couldn't take their eyes off him, especially one in particular. Danica was staring at Darren like he was the rare first edition of Pride and Prejudice she'd been searching for all her life. 
For the first time since he had entered the bookstore, Brandon felt a glimmer of hope. Perhaps something good would come out of this event after all. Make that something incredibly good. His gaze shifted from Danica to the woman standing behind her. His mouth fell open to see the beautiful face of his old crush. Bria Montgomery. What was she doing here? Maybe God was already answering Aiden's prayers. Why else would the one woman he had been longing to see for the past decade be standing 15 feet away? Brandon's feet began moving with a mind of their own, closing the gap between him and Bria. She was still as beautiful as the last time he saw her, except her hair was back to its natural honey-blonde color. Gone were the purple highlights and the hummingbird nose ring she used to wear. With a light blue tank top and jeans on, she looked every bit like the girl who asked to borrow his English lecture notes one day during sophomore year. She had been the first female he had ever had a real conversation with, and she would become his closest friend for the next year and a half. That's why it had been such a shock when she left school suddenly and never returned. One day she had kissed him, the next day she was gone. Bria had left him with so many questions, questions he thought he'd never find answers to. But here she was, and here he was. The two of them meeting again in the most surprising, amazing way. Brandon was sure the dopey smile on his face revealed all the emotions in his heart. But how did she feel about him? He desperately needed to know. He walked up to her, surprising himself with his determination to not let her go until he found out. Chapter 4 Bria Bria and Amy entered through the store's back entrance and stopped by the children's section where Seth happily plopped down on a beanbag to resume reading. The two women then weaved their way around and through dozens of bookcases until they reached the front of the store. Bria stopped in her tracks. It appeared there was a medical emergency going on. Amy paused and turned around. Isn't this the way to the book signing? It is, but something's not right. As soon as Bria said those words, her mouth ran dry. What do you mean? Amy retraced her steps and returned to Bria's side. What's wrong? What's wrong was that the last person Bria expected to see again was heading straight toward her. It was her college friend, all right, except this Brandon Spark was a little taller, but still lanky. Some other things about him also hadn't changed. He had the same longing in his deep blue eyes when she used to catch him staring at her in class, and the same adoring grin he had had after she had cut him off mid-sentence with a kiss. Speaking of wrong, everything about that day of the kiss had been wrong. From the super-revealing outfit she had worn to the emotions raging through her body, she had been furious after finding out her boyfriend had cheated on her with a girl from his study group. All she wanted to do was make him as jealous and hurt as he had made her. So, when Richard happened to pass by her and Brandon as they walked out of a lecture hall, she decided to get revenge. She had grabbed her friend by the shoulders and thrown herself at his unsuspecting mouth. She always regretted kissing Brandon, and even more so today, as they stood face to face. He was the kindest guy she had ever known, and hurt. There were no words to express how much shame and remorse she felt. She stood there mute and frozen in place as Brandon greeted them. Is that who I think it is? Amy squealed in delight and stuck out her hand in Brandon's direction. I'm your biggest fan, Mr. Spark. Thank you so much. Brandon shook Amy's hand. I appreciate you coming today. My meet and greets aren't usually this exciting, but it looks like things are settling down now. Is everything okay? I hear a lot of commotion. Amy tilted her head to one side as she listened. A lot of deep voices and the sound of work boots, I think. A line appeared between Brandon's brows. Someone fainted earlier. My brother and his crew are here helping her out. They're firefighters, hence the boots. He added for Amy's sake. He paused, then turned to Bria with a curious look. It's so good to see you, Bria. I can't believe you're here. Amy gasped. Wait a minute. You know Mr. Spark? Bria felt a jab in her side. The sharp pain from Amy's elbow worked to pull her out of her trance. She squeezed out a smile as she held up his book. I brought my friend Amy to get your autograph. 
Still hyperventilating, Amy exclaimed, Bria, you know a famous author and you didn't tell me? I didn't know either. He wasn't an author when we were friends. She winced at her word choice. A real friend wouldn't have used another person for such selfish motives. She'd been well aware of Brandon's crush on her, yet she hadn't thought twice about misleading him with a kiss. Until afterward, of course. But by then, it was easier to disappear from his life than to tell him the truth. He was a great friend, but nothing more. Their chaste kiss had confirmed it. I wouldn't call myself famous, Brandon interjected. But I really appreciate you coming out to support me. We wouldn't have missed it, Amy gushed. Well, I kind of dragged Bria here. Romance novels aren't really her thing, but she's such a good friend, she offered to drive me. I still can't believe you two know each other. How'd you guys meet? Bria jumped in before Brandon could answer. I'll fill you in later, Ames. I'm sure Brandon, Mr. Spark, has a lot of people waiting to meet him. We shouldn't keep him from his job. Brandon glanced over his shoulder, seeming to assess the situation. One firefighter was talking to an older woman, while the other three were milling around, chatting with some readers. A few women who were lined up at a table waved when Brandon looked over. He returned their wave and held up an index finger to let them know he'd be with them soon. When Brandon returned his attention to Bria, he frowned. I guess I should start the signing now. I don't want to keep everyone waiting. She nodded readily. Go right ahead. He hesitated. Will you be sticking around, Bria? It'd be nice to catch up. Don't you worry, Mr. Spark, Amy answered. We'll be here for as long as it takes. Right, Bria? Bria wished Amy could see her wide-eyed glare. Instead, she opted for a loud sigh that any hearing person would be able to catch. We'll wait a little while, but honestly, I'm really tired. I've been on my feet all day. Oh? Did you become a teacher like you wanted to? Brandon's question both surprised and impressed Bria. You remember I wanted to go into teaching? Of course, you talked about it all the time. You wanted to teach second grade because at that age the kids are still cute, but they're also more independent. Is that the grade you teach? I'm not a teacher. I ended up doing something different. She's a hairstylist, Amy piped up. Bria's the only one I trust with my crazy mane. She smoothed down one side of her wavy locks that had been cut into a short bob. No one else can tame this frizzy head of mine. It looks great. Brandon smiled at Bria. I'm glad you found something else you enjoy doing. You did have the coolest hair in our school. Bria smirked. Considering how small and conservative their college had been, it wasn't hard to stand out among their classmates. It pays the bills. That's always a good thing. Yeah, it is. Bria shifted uncomfortably from one foot to the other, her heels digging into the soft rubber of her flip-flops. She wished Brandon would stop looking at her with such concern. After what she had done to him, she didn't deserve to be treated so kindly. He had every right to be angry with her for disappearing from his life without an explanation. They'd been friends. Close friends. He had been the one person who had accepted her without question and had never judged her. Yet she was sure he would think otherwise if he knew how far she had fallen. You better go, she urged with a tight smile. Your fans are waiting for you. Brandon glanced over his shoulder at the line of women, now doubled in length, waiting for him. Oh, right. You know what? Why don't I sign your book now, Amy? I think I have a pen somewhere. He patted the front and back pockets of his jeans but came up with nothing. I've got one. Bria took the ballpoint pen that had been keeping her bun up and handed it to him, along with Amy's book. His cheeks flushed as their fingers brushed against each other. Ducking his head, he murmured a soft, Thanks, and proceeded to sign his autograph. When he finished, he touched Amy's arm to get her attention, then guided the book into her hands. Here you go. Thank you, Mr. Spark. I am thrilled I got to meet you. Your voice sounds just like I imagined it would. Oh, yeah? How did you imagine it? Deep and masculine, of course. He chuckled. That's the first time anyone's ever said that about me, but I'll take it. Women usually say that about my brother, Darren. Speaking of... A tall man appeared at Brandon's side. Hey, bro, we're done here, so I'm gonna head out. Bria observed the hunk of a man wearing a bright yellow fireman's uniform. 
He stood a whole head taller than Brandon, with broad shoulders and a strong jawline. Her fingers tingled as she imagined what it would feel like to run them through his head of thick, wavy hair. Brandon was right. Everything about his brother screamed manly. Whoa. Thanks so much for coming. Brandon gave his brother a quick pat on the back before introducing him. This is my brother, Daring Darren, as we like to call him. Darren, this is Amy, one of my readers, and this, he added with emphasis, is Bria. It's nice to meet you, ladies. Darren shook Amy's hand. When he took Bria's hand between both of his, he gave her a pointed look. Hold up. Are you the Bria? The Bria? To Bria's surprise, her voice came out breathless. Perhaps it was because her hand had completely disappeared in Darren's large palms. Or the fact that there was an unspoken meaning behind his question. I suppose so. I don't know of any other people with my name. He turned to Brandon. This is the Bria you went to school with. The one and only, Brandon answered enthusiastically. I can't believe it either. I've heard a lot about you. Darren flashed Bria a bright smile as he let go of her hand. It's good to finally meet you in person. You too. Bria caught the knowing glance that passed between the brothers. The conversation was getting more awkward by the second. She took Amy's arm, ready to escape. We better go. Good to meet you, Darren. And, uh, nice seeing you, Brandon. She and Amy were nearly back to the children's section when someone tapped her on the shoulder. She stopped and turned around to see Brandon with her pen in hand. Oh, hey. I forgot to give this back to you. Bria took the pen and stuffed it in her pocket. No worries. Thanks. Sure. Brandon paused as he took a step back. I guess I'll see you around sometime. Before Bria could answer, Amy jumped in. Mr. Spark, you should have Bria cut your hair. She works at a salon in downtown San Jose. She cuts is the name. You should look it up. His face brightened, erasing the lines that had creased his forehead moments before. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I could use a haircut. Bria eyed Brandon's short hair. Unless he wanted to go bald, he really had no business seeing her. But then again, his wistful smile told her a haircut wasn't the only reason he'd be looking her up. And that was exactly why she hoped to never hear from him again. Chapter 5. Brandon Brandon swung open the door to Cherry on Top, his brother Colin's ice cream shop. A blast of cold air hit his face as soon as he stepped inside, bringing some much-needed relief from the summer heat. He waved to the dark-haired man behind the counter, then got in line behind a mom with her three sons. As the line inched forward, he watched the young woman struggle to keep the older two in line while also balancing a baby on her hip. One of the boys looked to be around five or six, the other a couple of years younger. He grinned as he observed them and marveled at how much they reminded him of himself and his brothers. It still amazed him to this day how his own mother had raised the five of them. Each brother had his own personality, and they all vied for attention at one time or another. Except for him. He preferred to fly under the radar and let his brothers shine. He'd never wanted anyone's attention. Until he met Bria. Seeing his crush a week ago had both shocked and inspired him. After the book signing, he had rushed home and finished his story, then sent it off to his editor. To say he was pleased with the last scene was an understatement. He couldn't have written a better ending, and he owed it all to his chance meeting with Bria. She'd woken something up in him, the part of his heart that had been locked away and put on hold for the past decade. Since then, he'd been debating with himself. Should he see her again? Could he drop by the salon where she worked and ask for a haircut? Then get her number, casually, of course, and call her up and ask her out? His palms grew sweaty just thinking about it. Bria may have kissed him once, but she had also disappeared from his life soon after. She hadn't returned any of his calls, texts, or emails. Now that he thought about it, she hadn't seemed all that excited to see him at the bookstore. In fact, her eyes had only lit up when Darren joined their conversation. It figured. Who could compete with a man in uniform? Hey, Bran. 
Colin sighed and raised his metal scooper in greeting. Congrats on finishing your book. Brandon stepped up to the glass case that housed several large containers of ice cream. He raised a brow. Colin was usually the optimistic, fun-loving one, but his tone today was flat and lifeless. His dark hair was disheveled and his face was badly in need of a shave. With his posture slouched, they stood almost eye to eye for once. What was going on with his younger brother? Are you okay? I've been better. Colin pointed at a tub filled with white ice cream. You want your usual, white chocolate? Brandon nodded. Sure, thanks. Colin scooped up some ice cream into a waffle cone and handed it to him. He wiped his hands on the apron tied around his waist, then gestured with his head at a nearby table. My treat. I'll come over to chat after I ring up the other customers. Brandon took a seat at a table near the window. He began licking his sugary snack and had finished the cone by the time Colin joined him. His brother tapped his fingers on the table and absentmindedly stared out the window. Not wanting to push his brother to talk, Brandon sat back and waited. Waiting was one thing he was good at. As the more cautious one in their family, he'd been the last child to learn how to swim and ride a bike. Even Evan, who was younger by six years, had kissed a girl before he had. His slowness was a weakness most of the time. However, it came with its advantages. He had become a great listener, the one his brothers confided in the most. Releasing a deep breath, Colin leaned on his knees and laced his fingers together. His expression grew thoughtful as he turned to face Brandon. No one's supposed to know this, but Candy and I have been seeing each other. This news was no surprise to Brandon, nor any of their brothers. Aiden had already figured out there was something going on between their family friend, the sister of his old high school sweetheart, and Colin. How their happy-go-lucky brother had managed to catch the eye of a straight-laced food critic was the real shocker. Is it not working out for you guys? That's the thing. I have no idea what she wants. She hasn't told anyone about us. Her excuse was she didn't want to make things awkward for Aiden since there's so much history with her and our family. Then, she didn't want to take the attention away from Aiden and Abby when they were getting together. Colin suddenly straightened and narrowed his eyes. You know what? I think she's stalling. Yep, she's definitely stalling. I don't know why, but she's scared. Don't you think she's scared? I, I guess so? Brandon shrugged. I'm the last person you should be asking for advice about women. I was actually hoping you would help me. Oh yeah? You mean with Bria? Colin's whole demeanor changed as he focused his attention on Brandon. I couldn't believe it when Darren told me you ran into her after all these years. Did you ask her why she left school? Brandon shook his head. There wasn't enough time with the book signing starting, but I did find out she works at a salon ten minutes from here. I'm wondering if I should go see her. You know, to get a haircut? Colin held up his hands to make air quotes. A haircut, huh? I know where you're going with this. First you get a haircut, then you pop the question. Uh, pop the question? Brandon couldn't help the quiver in his voice. To marry me? No, man, of course not. To ask her out. Colin chuckled. On a real date, like you should have done all those years ago. Being best friends doesn't get you anywhere except the friend zone. And that, bro, is the last place you want to be with a woman. Brandon winced. He knew all about that zone. He had set up camp there during college as he watched Bria date one guy after another. It was a sad and lonely place to be. You don't have to tell me twice. I don't ever want to go back there again. I thought for sure we'd moved out of it when she kissed me. I just don't get why she disappeared. Do you think she regretted kissing me that much? He lowered his voice as he realized how desperate he sounded. I know I didn't have any experience, but I thought it was good. Actually, it had been more than good. Amazing was a more accurate term to describe the jolt of electricity that zapped through his entire body when their lips touched, but he'd rather keep those details to himself. You can tell when someone's into a kiss, can't you? Sure you can but there are also people good at faking it. Did you see Evan's kiss last week? Colin wiggled his eyebrows up and down suggestively as he referred to their youngest brother's TV show performance. We all know he's dating Emma. 
but the way he kissed his co-star made me wonder if there's something going on with them, too. He's a good actor. Brandon found himself reassuring Colin as much as himself. He could only imagine how hard it must be to stay on the straight and narrow in Hollywood. He reminded himself to pray more regularly for Evan. But for someone not trained in acting, it wouldn't be so easy to fake passion, right? A smile played on Colin's lips as he considered Brandon's question. I can only speak from personal experience, which is why I know Candy's into me, even if she doesn't want to admit it. Brandon's jaw dropped. You guys have kissed? Oh yeah, can you blame her? He puffed out his chest with a wink. It's nearly impossible to resist this work of art. I was designed by the good lord himself. I see you're feeling better about the situation. Brandon rolled his eyes. Despite his teasing tone, he admired Colin's confidence. If he had an ounce of his brother's swagger, he'd have gotten the girl of his dreams long ago, instead of dreaming about her. At least that makes one of us. Have some faith in yourself, Bran. Colin pointed a finger in his direction. God made you too, and there's a woman out there who's going to find you irresistible. Maybe Bria, maybe someone else. But, whoever she is, you'll figure it out. You just need to be patient. Patience. Brandon knew all about long-suffering. But for once in his life, he was tired of waiting. He wanted to make things happen. His happily ever after was a decade overdue. It was time to rewrite the ending to his romance story, just as he had rewritten the ending to his novel. And with that goal in mind, he decided to pay a visit to Bria's salon the next day. Chapter 6 Bria Bria pulled a hairdryer from one of the slots in the cabinet to her right and selected a flat brush with boar and nylon bristles to use. With the easy familiarity that came from working in a salon for the past nine years, she began blowing her client's short hair. The older woman, a regular at the salon, fidgeted in her seat. Her eyes squeezed shut. I'm so nervous. I've never cut my hair this short before. Please tell me it looks halfway decent. Don't worry, Mrs. Connolly. Bria raised her voice above the whirring sound of the dryer. She paused to place a comforting hand on her arm. You're going to love your new look when I'm done styling it. You have the perfect face shape for a pixie cut. Trust me. Have I led you astray before? Mrs. Connolly smiled and rested her hands in her lap. No, you haven't, dear. I trust you completely. I just can't wait to see myself. Just a few minutes more. Bria busied herself with the task at hand. Without thinking, she swept the back of her client's hair forward, blow-drying it in place to keep it from puffing up. She repeated the same step with the sides and front, then worked toward the crown until the top of the head was dry as well. Mrs. Connolly's hairdo was coming together nicely, but Bria couldn't help feeling more conflicted with each passing second. Something she had said moments ago haunted her. Have I led you astray before? A pair of blue eyes flashed through her mind. Brandon. She shook her head in dismay. If there was anyone she had misled, it was him. She still couldn't believe she'd run into him last week. Thankfully, he hadn't shown up at the salon, despite Amy's not-so-casual invitation. Her friend may have invited him with the best of intentions, or so she said, but it didn't make the situation any less awkward. Amazingly enough, Bria was certain Brandon still carried a torch for her all these years later. This time, though, she wasn't going to take advantage of his kindness. She'd make it clear to him they were friends and only friends assuming she saw him again, which wasn't likely considering how shy and passive he was. There was no way he'd show up at the salon, right? The buzzing of her phone interrupted her thoughts. She chose to ignore it, though her body tensed up each time her back pocket vibrated. Not only was it unprofessional to answer a personal call during work, she dreaded seeing her ex's name appear on the screen. She was certain it was Richard, calling again for what was the tenth time in an hour. Why couldn't he take no for an answer? Because he was Richard Weaver, son of Senator Weaver and Alameda County's district attorney. The man didn't know subtlety if it hit him in the face. Bria brushed a last strand of wayward hair into place and shut off the dryer. 
She grabbed a small container of pomade from a shelf, took a dab of it, and warmed the sticky mixture between her fingers. She pulled it through the ends of Mrs. Connolly's hair and stepped back to inspect her handiwork. Nodding with satisfaction, she removed the black cape draped over her client and turned the seat around to face the mirror. Are you ready to be wowed? I think so. The older woman took a deep breath. Okay, let's do it. No, come on. Bria groaned as her phone sounded again. She fished it out of her pocket and pressed the button to send the call to voicemail. Richard would have to wait, something she knew he wasn't good at doing. But such was life. Is something wrong? Mrs. Connolly wrung her hands together. Oh, I look horrible, don't I? I knew I wouldn't be able to pull this off. Oh, no, no, no. This has nothing to do with your hair. So sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. Bria rubbed her client's shoulder to console her. Open your eyes. You look great. Mrs. Connolly opened one eye, then the other. Her jaw dropped as she stared at her reflection. Ooh, girl, you did good. Thank you so much. I love it. She turned from side to side to admire her new do. You are a miracle worker. Bria squeezed out a smile. Miracle worker? If only that were true. With the way things were going lately, she could use a miracle. She had two men interested in her, but she wanted nothing to do with either of them. All she wished for was to make enough money each month to keep a roof over her and Seth's heads and put food on the table. And peace, if that were possible. Peace from her past regrets, as well as the people associated with those regrets who wouldn't leave her alone. Life didn't make sense sometimes. Or maybe it was just her life. She'd confessed her sins long ago and turned over a new leaf after Seth was born. Becoming a single mother at age 22 had pushed her to grow up and start taking her faith seriously. Not having her family's support had forced her to rely on God, the one she had forsaken during college. Things had been looking up the past year since she had found this current salon to work at. The bills were finally getting paid on time, and she had formed some friendships at her church. She thought she had finally found some semblance of peace, until her ex called her out of the blue last month. Even worse, he wouldn't stop calling. Is everything all right, Bria? Mrs. Connolly tilted her head and looked at her with concern. Is someone bothering you? She glanced down. She hadn't realized she was clutching her phone tightly with both hands against her chest. Loosening her grip, she placed it back in her pocket. It's my ex-boyfriend. It's a long story, she added with a sigh. One she didn't want to talk about, especially with a client. And especially not with her son sitting 30 feet away on the other side of the salon. With school out for the summer and no money for childcare, Bria's only option was to bring Seth with her to work. Thankfully, her boss didn't mind so long as he stayed quiet and out of their way. She glanced over her shoulder to where he sat cross-legged in a plastic chair. As usual, he had his head down in a book, the second one he had read that day. They'd likely need to make another trip to the library tomorrow at the rate he was reading. This was one time, however, that she appreciated his quiet nature. Her boy was the one source of peace in her crazy life. I'm sorry to hear that. Now it was Mrs. Connolly's turn to console Bria. She placed a wrinkled hand on her arm. I don't know if you're a person of prayer, but God knows what you're going through. He'll provide for your needs. I know he will, Bria smiled gratefully. I've been a Christian since I was six, but I went through a bit of a prodigal son phase when I was younger. I've been facing the consequences of the choices I made then. Unfortunately, dealing with my ex is one of them. The older woman nodded thoughtfully. I see. Well, if it's any consolation, nothing that happens is a surprise to the Lord. The real surprise is seeing how he turns things around for us. And when he doesn't change the circumstances, he does something even better. What's that? He changes hearts. Bria blinked. In that moment, she felt as if God was speaking directly to her. Or maybe he was. An idea popped into her head. She was going to start praying for her ex, that God would change him. Thank you, Mrs. Connolly. You don't know how much I needed to hear that. Mrs. Connolly smiled as she rose to her feet. 
Then my work here is done. It's time I go show off my new hairstyle to the world. Thank you, dear. When should I come back for a trim? Four to six weeks is a good amount of time. Bria walked her to the register where she rang her up. As she handed her some change, she added, Thanks so much for your wise words. Hopefully the next time you come in, I'll have good news to tell you. Bria waved goodbye and looked at her schedule for the rest of the day. There were two more appointments back-to-back -back starting at 12.30. She checked her watch. If she sent Seth to buy lunch right now, she'd have 15 minutes to eat before the next client showed up. Walking over to her son, she called out, Hey, buddy, are you hungry? She pulled some cash from her pocket and waved it in front of him. Why don't you go next door and buy some sandwiches for us? Seth glanced up from his book with wide eyes. Shaking his head adamantly, he asked, Can you get them? I can't leave the salon. I'm the only one working right now. It's just next door, bud. We've been there plenty of times. Just order our usual. She stuffed the money in his hand. You can even get a bag of chips or a cookie. Bria grinned with enthusiasm, even though inside her annoyance grew. Why did Seth have such a hard time socializing? When she was his age, she was singing solos with the church choir in front of hundreds of people. Sure, her parents had pushed her to perform, but she had enjoyed the attention. Why couldn't her son have inherited some of her traits? Uh, I'm scared. What if they ask me questions? I don't want to go. He opened his hand and let the $20 bill fall to the floor. I'm not hungry anyway. Bria threw her hands up in frustration. He wasn't hungry, but she was. She wouldn't be able to last on her feet for another three hours without something in her stomach. Gritting her teeth, she tried again. Seth, baby, please try. I'll pack lunch for us the rest of the week, okay? But we both need to eat today, so I need you to go next door and buy us some food. Any food. Mom, no. She plucked the book out of his hands and stuffed the money into his fist. Pulling him to his feet, she walked him, or maybe dragged was a better word, to the front of the store. You can do this. You're a big boy, Seth. I'll be waiting right here for you. Now go. With that final command, she pushed him out the door and said a quick prayer for God to start changing hearts, beginning with her sons. Chapter 7 Brandon Brandon looked up as the bell over the sandwich shop door jingled. A young boy walked in, his face almost as pale as the white blonde hair falling into his eyes. His heart clenched as he observed him. Looking at the boy was like looking at a photo of himself as a kid. That deer-in-the-headlights, get-me-out-of-here expression was all too familiar. Who was this child, and where were his parents? The boy shuffled his feet over to the counter and waited behind another customer. When he reached the front of the line, he handed some money to the store clerk and mumbled a few words. From Brandon's table ten feet away, he could barely hear the boy's voice. Ham? Tuna? He had no idea what he had ordered. Neither did the man helping him. The worker leaned forward and asked him to repeat himself. Brandon caught his answer this time. The usual. He supposed this boy came here often. At least he wasn't lost. That much was clear but he was definitely out of his element. A wave of empathy washed over Brandon. He set his sandwich down and wiped his hands. Should he? Could he? It wouldn't hurt to go over and talk to the boy, right? He approached the counter slowly, as if any sudden movements would send the boy running. When he reached his side, he smiled and leaned down. Hey, I'm Brandon. I just wanted to tell you what an awesome job you're doing buying lunch by yourself. I wouldn't have been brave enough to do this when I was your age. The boy's eyes grew round, so round that his pupils looked like black discs suspended in seas of blue. He licked his lips and swallowed hard. Th thanks Brandon took his answer, breathy as it was, as a good sign. Is your mom or dad waiting for you outside? You're not by yourself, are you? He shook his head. No, they're not waiting for you, or no, you're not by yourself. Brandon chuckled. I should have asked those questions separately, huh? Two large front teeth peeked out as the boy gave him a small smile. My, my mom's next door. Oh, good. 
Brandon returned his smile. That's good to know. I just wanted to be sure you're safe. The boy smiled again, this time wider. Next door. Brandon cocked his head as the answer registered in his brain. Did he mean next door as in the pet grooming store? Or next door as in the salon? Bria's workplace. Are you talking about the dog washing place? N no You mean the hair salon? The boy nodded eagerly. Oh, cool. I'm actually headed there soon. I'm going to get a haircut after lunch. Brandon swallowed hard. Now that he had said the words out loud, he wasn't sure it was such a good idea. For one thing, he didn't even have an appointment. Not making one had been an out for him. If Bria didn't have time, he wouldn't have to follow through on his plan. But if she did, he gulped, not knowing which option he preferred. You don't have to worry. Huh? Brandon looked over at the boy. Had he just talked to him without prompting? What was that? My mom's nice. People like her. He gave him a hopeful look. His pupils had returned to their normal size, allowing his blue eyes to shine. You can ask her to cut your hair. Oh, you can tell I'm nervous, can't ya? Brandon exhaled a shaky breath. You see, it's been a long time since I've... He hesitated. Gone to a salon. Only he needed to know salon was code word for talk to a girl. The boy nodded knowingly. For a long time, I didn't want my hair cut. I don't like having sharp things near my head. That's why my mom uses electric clippers. She can use them on you if you want. The tension in Brandon's shoulders fell away. This kid sure was endearing and easy to talk to. That's a great idea, buddy. Thank you. If you need help picking a hairstyle, my mom can help with that too. She's real good at her job. Yeah, that's good to know. Brandon smiled. Maybe if Bria wasn't available for a haircut, he'd ask the boy's mom. He was certain she'd do a better job than he did at home. I usually cut my own hair, but maybe it's time to try something new. What do you think if I dyed it pink? He joked. Or purple. The boy let loose a toothy grin that lit up his entire face. Blue would be cool. Brandon ran a hand through his short hair as he pretended to consider the boy's suggestion. Yeah, blue. I like that. Thanks for the idea. The man behind the counter set a paper bag in front of the boy, along with a handful of loose change. The boy stood up on his tiptoes to gather everything. Here, let me... Brandon handed him the bills, then scooped up the coins before dropping them into his small palm. Why don't you put those in your pocket so you have your hands free to hold the sandwiches? The boy did as Brandon suggested. He stuffed the money into the pockets of his shorts and carefully patted the Velcro closers shut. He then reached for the to-go bag. With a look of relief, he stated, Thank you for your help. Of course, buddy, any time. Brandon walked him to the front door and held it open. I'll wait here until you get next door. Brandon watched the boy walk down the sidewalk to the next storefront. It warmed his heart to see his steps a lot steadier than they were earlier. This kid would be okay. He was sure of it. With the right amount of encouragement, he'd gain some confidence to face the world. The boy balanced the bag with one hand while he reached for the door handle with the other. The door swung wide as someone from the inside held it open for him. Soon after, he disappeared inside the salon. Brandon was about to head back inside the shop to finish his lunch when the salon door opened again. He squinted against the bright noonday sun and made out the petite form of a woman. She waved and called out to him. Thanks for helping my son. That was very kind of you. His jaw dropped. Could it be? Bria, is that you? Brandon? Shock laced her voice as well. You're the man who helped Seth? He let go of the sandwich shop's door, letting it swing shut behind him. With tentative steps, he walked toward the woman of his dreams for the second time in a week. Seth's your son? He blinked in surprise. I had no idea. With one foot propping the door ajar, she crossed her arms. The black apron she wore boasted the words, chic cuts, in curvy letters on her chest. Several plastic combs and the handles of metal scissors and brushes poked out of the large pockets on the front. Bria's hair was pulled back into a high ponytail, 
revealing the slender curve of her neck. With minimal makeup on, she looked as young as she had in college. Her sheepish expression also reflected the one she had had after they had kissed all those years ago. Yeah, she lowered her voice as she continued. He's the reason I left school. Oh. Brandon was close enough now to see the dark circles under her eyes. I had no idea, he repeated, still in disbelief. Actually, that's not true. The real reason I left school is because I flunked out. He's the reason I didn't go back. That's why I ended up cutting hair. She jerked her thumb toward the inside of the salon. A lot's happened in the last ten years. Brandon nodded. Yeah, a lot. He scratched the back of his neck as he tried to gather his thoughts. Why was it he could write hundreds of pages of eloquent sentences, but he couldn't verbalize a single word when he needed to? All he wanted was to tell Bria he wished she had confided in him about her struggles, that he would have done anything to help her out. But all he said was, He's a great kid, Seth. We had a good chat. Bria smiled, easing the exhaustion in her face for a moment. He is. Not that I had anything to do with how he turned out. It's all God. He speaks highly of you, Brandon assured her. And your haircutting skills. I told him I needed a haircut, and he said I'd be in good hands with you. Not in those exact words, but something to the effect. She quirked a brow. I'm surprised you got all that out of him. He's never that open with strangers. To tell you the truth, I was a little worried when he told me he met a nice man at the sandwich shop. He was right, though. She added with a twinkle in her eyes. I'm glad you were there to help him. It was his first time buying something on his own. I normally wouldn't let him go somewhere by himself, but I was desperate. My boss called in sick, so I'm manning the place by myself today. If I don't eat after a couple of hours on my feet, I get really cranky. He finished for her. I know. You used to bring snacks to lectures. Yogurt-covered pretzels, granola bars, trail mix. You had your own convenience store in your backpack. I did, didn't I? An amused look crossed her face. You have a really good memory, you know that? Brandon had to agree, especially when it came to Bria. I have a knack for details. I guess it comes with being a writer. Her gaze lingered on his face for an extra beat. Well, I need to get some food in my stomach now. Thank you again for watching out for Seth. Yeah, no problem. Brandon stuck his hands in his pockets, wishing they didn't have to end their conversation already. There was still so much he wanted to ask Bria. I guess I'll see you around. Bria paused with one hand on the doorframe. If you want a haircut, I have an opening in an hour. You do? That'd be great. He nodded readily. I'll be back then. He waved at Bria and headed back to the sandwich shop. As he strolled down the sidewalk, he noticed his own steps had grown lighter and more assured. He was certain it was because, for the first time in a long time, the door to his heart was opening again filling him with a great sense of hope. Chapter 8. Bria Bria snuck one last bite of her sandwich before the next client walked through the door. For the next half hour, she worked on the young woman's hair, trimming the dry split ends. Once she got the length right, she blew the long locks dry. While she worked, she kept an eye on Seth, who was back to reading his book in the corner of the salon. Her heart clenched seeing him there. So often she wished he had more friends, or any friends for that matter. She asked his teachers if his lack of social skills was a problem, but they all assured her he was their prized student, cooperative and quiet. She sighed. Those were the exact qualities that made her wonder if he'd ever make it in the real world. Unless there was a job that required one to sit and read all day, she didn't know what Seth would end up doing with his life. However, what Brandon said about his and Seth's interaction had encouraged her. In fact, seeing her old friend an hour ago had been an unexpected bright spot in her day. Brandon had that effect on her. He had always been steady and calm, the one constant during her otherwise stormy college days. The way he had accepted her news about Seth surprised her too, although it shouldn't have. He had never judged her or her choices. It was as if nothing could change the way he saw her. 
a thought that both comforted and worried her. His friendship had meant so much to her before. It would be good to reconnect. But could he still be hung up on her after all these years? Brandon entered the salon at that moment. He waved shyly at her, then found a spot on the couch in the waiting area. He grabbed a magazine off the table and opened it up. His very pose, closed and hunched over, reminded her of Seth's and was a visual reminder of why she'd never seen him as more than a friend. He just wasn't her type. What was her type? Physically, it was everything her ex was, tall and rugged. Richard could command the attention of a whole room as soon as he stepped inside. His personality was just as large, which explained why he was contemplating a career in politics and could handle being in the spotlight. These were the things that had drawn Bria to him when he approached her after a study group session. He had asked her out on the spot and wouldn't take no for an answer. That's how she had found herself doing things she never dreamed of doing as a Christian. And boy, did her choices have consequences. Even a decade later, she still couldn't escape Richard's grasp. Even before the thought fully crossed her mind, Bria's phone buzzed again in her back pocket. It was Richard. It had to be. He wouldn't accept the fact that she didn't want to hear from him, much less date him again. Time and distance had taught her what she hadn't known back in college. No man could take God's place in her heart. If her ex had a relationship with God, he would understand her reasons for turning him down. Unfortunately, faith was the last thing on his mind. She finished up with her client and walked her to the register. They chatted for a few minutes and set up another appointment before parting ways. When Bria turned to tell Brandon it was his turn, she found Seth with him on the couch. Brandon held her son's paperback, the book flipped over as he perused the back cover. She watched their interaction in amazement. Seth had his mouth open and actual words were coming out so loudly and clearly she heard them ten feet away. Brandon said something that made her son smile. The way they were chatting and making eye contact did something to her. She had never seen her son so at ease, so himself outside of their home. It was a shocking yet beautiful sight to see. Brandon looked up and their eyes locked. Is it my turn? She struggled to swallow past the lump in her throat. Yeah, whenever you're ready. If you two want to chat some more, I can wait. We're done for now, Mom, Seth answered for them both as he jumped to his feet. Brandon handed the book back to Seth and patted his back. Thanks for showing me your book, buddy. I forgot how much I used to like reading fantasy. No problem. Seth shot Bria a serious look as he passed her. Use the clippers on Mr. Brandon, okay, Mom? Uh, sure, bud. She called out to his back. She turned to Brandon and cocked her head. What was that about? Can you believe he's giving me haircutting advice? Brandon chuckled. He's a smart kid. That he is. She motioned for him to follow her to a chair. After he sat down, she covered him with a black cape and secured the button at the back of his neck. He reads three to four books a day. For fun, she emphasized with a smirk. I don't think I've read a book for pleasure since... ever? Didn't you read Romeo and Juliet? We had to write a paper on it for English Lit. That was not by choice, she laughed. I'd never read such a depressing story unless I had to. I don't know how anyone can call that book a romance. Oh, it's not. It actually starts out as more of a comedy than turns into a tragedy. People think Shakespeare was trying a different take on tragedy when he wrote it. Bria rolled her eyes. It's all Greek to me. And to think I majored in English... This explains why I flunked out of college. That and the life choices I made. She cringed, not wanting to rehash her mistakes. It's all in the past, though. Brandon met her gaze in the mirror. We learn the most from our mistakes, don't you think? You can say that again. She was still learning from hers, but wishing she didn't have to. Eager to change the subject, she asked, So, what style would you like today? Just a trim or a shorter all over? Whatever you think will look good. I trust your expertise. She grinned. I see you're feeling brave. Actually, I am. His tone seemed to reflect more than he was saying. 
He was like Seth in this way, always holding his cards close, but there was a telltale sparkle in his eyes. When they lit up, they were a surprising hue, a vivid blue like a cloudless summer day. Her stomach dropped as she got lost in them for a moment. Did he always have such gorgeous eyes? Swallowing her surprise, she forced herself to focus on her job. Studying his reflection in the mirror, she considered the best style for his face shape and hair texture. Let's go short. I think it'll be good for this heat wave we're having. He nodded. Sounds good. She set to work combing his hair straight. Using a comb in one hand, she grabbed small sections of hair and cut the ends with an electric clipper in her other hand. Buzzing filled the air, breaking through the peace and quiet of the salon. After Bria had finished the back of Brandon's head, she leaned close to his side as she cut around his ear. It was only then that she noticed how bright red his face had become. She gasped and took a step back. Are you okay? Is the cape too hot? N no, it's fine. I'm fine. He stammered, his complexion darkening even more. Now the tips of his ears matched his face as well. I, I I'm, I'm just not used to having someone so close to me. Oh! She noticed beads of sweat dripping down the sides of his face. She grabbed the hair dryer and turned it to the cool setting before aiming it at Brandon's head and neck. Does this help? He nodded, relief softening his features. After about 30 seconds, his face returned to its normal color. Bria turned off the dryer and set it down. She snuck a peek at Brandon, who had his eyes closed, his chest rising and falling at an even pace. Placing a hand on his shoulder, she rubbed it gently. Are you sure you're okay, Brandon? His eyes opened. I'm fine, really. Sorry about that. I just get nervous sometimes, especially with people I don't know or haven't seen in a while. It's okay. She gave him a sympathetic smile. You don't have to explain yourself. It's nothing personal to do with you. I mean, not exactly. He frowned. I just get in my head and get caught up in what other people are thinking. Socializing's not my strong suit. You know me, always the introvert. I think I understand. She tried to put herself in his shoes. It sounds like what I went through when I moved back home and started going to church again. It was like everyone and their neighbor was watching and judging me. That was the one time I wished I could keep my head down, tune out the world, and disappear into a hole. Except in your case, I guess you feel like that most of the time, but on a smaller scale? You could say that. That's why I love being an author. I don't have to interact with people in person, at least not on a regular basis. I get to disappear in my books in the comfort of my home. Bria smirked. That sounds exactly like someone I know. Brandon glanced over at Seth. Yeah, I think we get each other. No wonder he took to you so quickly, she sighed. I'm glad someone understands him. I have a hard time knowing what he's thinking most of the time. Or maybe he's not thinking much at all. I really have no idea. No, I bet he thinks a lot. It just takes him longer than other people to process things. Sometimes even longer to say them. But he'll open up when he's ready. Bria took in Brandon's bashful smile in the mirror. She found herself wondering if he was not only talking about her son. What things did he hold on to inside? And how did she factor into them? Chapter 9 Brandon Brandon closed his eyes, savoring the feel of Bria's hands running through his hair. He focused on taking deep, slow breaths, and not on her skilled fingers as she smoothed his hair to the side and applied some gel. He already embarrassed himself enough a few minutes ago when he had turned into a living, breathing tomato. It took everything in him now to not react to her touch. It wasn't just his social anxiety that had him blushing and sweating earlier. It was a fundamentally male thing, the way a man reacts to a woman he's interested in. Which explained why his body went crazy when Bria's warm breath caressed his earlobe as she leaned in. And now, he was more than a little anxious to know what she thought of him. Was she treating him so nicely because he had helped her son out? Did she only think of him as a friend? More importantly, was Seth's father in the picture? 
He still had so many questions and no courage to ask them. This was one problem he had to remedy. With his eyes still shut, he said a quick prayer for boldness. If God could make a donkey in the Old Testament talk, he could certainly help him form some words, couldn't he? Brandon opened his eyes in time to receive the mirror Bria handed him. Are you done? Yep, you're good to go. She spun his chair in a 180. Take a look and let me know what you think. It's probably a little shorter than you're used to, but I think it suits you. He gazed at his reflection in the hand mirror, taking in his new haircut. The new style, which was cut closely to his head on the sides and back, gave him a tougher, more masculine appearance. Maybe it could help him be tougher on the inside, too. I like it. I like it a lot. Thanks, Bria. You're very welcome. She removed the cape from his body and shook it out, letting the excess hair fall to the ground. Let's get you cleaned up. I hate when there's bits and pieces of hair stuck on my skin. It drives me nuts. Brandon held his breath as she leaned close to dust off his face and neck with a large fluffy brush. The last scent he got was a whiff of her sweet floral perfume, which made his body go nuts again. He felt his cheeks flush and quickly shut his eyes in embarrassment. Why, oh why, did he act like a teenager around her? He was a grown man for crying out loud. Brandon, it's me. The girl you used to watch chick flicks with every Sunday night when we were supposed to be studying? We were pretty good friends once upon a time. There's no need to feel nervous around me. He opened his eyes to find Bria with a wistful smile on her face. Her soothing words, along with her lighthearted tone, made his worries fade. It was like old times again. Just the two of them enjoying each other's company. I know. Thanks for reminding me. I guess I'm just out of practice. I haven't hung out with any one of the opposite sex for a long time. Not that I don't talk to women, I do. Almost all the authors I collaborate with online are female. But in person, it's just me and my brothers. You don't date? He lowered his gaze, not wanting to meet her eyes. Not really. I tried online dating a few years ago, but it never went further than a few messages back and forth. And since I work from home, there aren't many opportunities for me to meet people. Not that I would know how to strike up a conversation if I did meet someone. Talking to women isn't my forte. She was in the middle of putting some supplies away, but stopped when he answered. But you write about women and relationships like you're so familiar with them. Amy, let me borrow your latest book. I've been reading a few chapters each night, and I gotta say, I'm enjoying it. That's saying a lot for someone who doesn't normally read romance. Thanks. He nodded in gratitude. That means a lot coming from you. So, you don't date. Have you ever been in a relationship? Cringing, he shook his head. Bria blinked in surprise. Wow. Not that there's anything wrong with being single, but... She paused. Where do you get your inspiration from? How do you write about love if you've never been in love? That was a loaded question. I have a good imagination? He shrugged, not knowing how else to explain it without revealing more than he wanted to. But you've kissed a girl before, right? Because if you haven't, then you're really good at imagining things. The kiss in your book, that first one the character shared, was out of this world. I've been kissed quite a few times, but never like that. Brandon swallowed hard. This conversation was becoming more awkward by the second. Trying to stall for time, he rubbed the back of his neck. I have. Once. Only once? It was quite m memorable. His mouth had grown so dry he was having trouble talking. Could it be that she didn't remember their kiss? For me, at least. She studied him for a moment, her expression blank. Suddenly, her brows shot up. Her mouth formed a small circle as understanding registered in her eyes. You don't mean... She lowered her voice. You and me? Our kiss? E yes Oh. This wasn't the reaction Brandon expected. The regret in Bria's voice cut through his heart like a knife. The kiss obviously hadn't meant the same to her as it had to him. He hopped down from the chair and reached for his wallet. 
The sooner he could escape this embarrassing situation, the better. He held out a $20 bill to her. Thanks again for cutting my hair. How much do I owe you? Bria waved his money away. Don't worry about it, it's on the house. Call it the old friend discount. Brandon winced. A pity discount was more like it. He was sure she was trying to ease her conscience with this generous act. Well, thanks for that. I'll be sure to leave a tip. He pointed to the tip jar sitting near the cash register. I better get going. Let me say bye to Seth. He felt her eyes on him as he walked over to where Seth sat. He placed a hand on the boy's shoulder to get his attention. Hey, buddy, you were right. Your mom did an awesome job, he remarked in a lighthearted tone. His heart, however, sank heavy in his chest. Brandon tried his best to focus on Seth's bright smile. Despite how the day was turning out, he was grateful to have met Bria's son. What do you think of my haircut? Seth cocked his head to one side, then to the other. He nodded in satisfaction. It's good. I like it. They both looked at the front door as someone walked in. A delivery man in a tan uniform greeted Bria and set a large vase on the counter. In the vase sat a bright bouquet of six sunflowers wrapped in silver paper and tied with a large bow. Are you Bria Montgomery? Yes, that's me. What is this? It's a special delivery for you. There's a card attached, he added before exiting the salon. Brandon watched with curiosity as Bria reached inside the bouquet and took out a small envelope. The hesitation with which she removed the card inside worried him. She didn't seem at all happy to be receiving such a gift. He gave Seth a small smile as he gestured toward Bria. I'll go see if your mom needs help. Seth nodded readily, his blue eyes dark with concern. Brandon reached Bria's side just in time to see the card drop to the floor. He picked it up and set it on the counter. Is everything okay? Bria glanced over her shoulder to where Seth was before replying. Fine. Everything's fine. Are you sure? Brandon hated to pry, but nothing about this situation seemed fine. When did a woman not appreciate getting flowers? A light bulb went on in his head. His author brain began whirring with all the possibilities. Was this gift from a secret admirer or a former flame? You don't seem happy about the flowers. She gave him a long and hard look, as if she were debating whether to confide in him. After some thought, she turned toward him so that her back faced Seth. In a hushed voice, she remarked, I'm not, but I can't talk about it now. I see. Do you, uh, maybe want to talk later? Brandon asked, surprising himself with his boldness. The last thing he had wanted a few minutes earlier was to stay in Bria's presence and embarrass himself further but it looked like she could really use a friend. If that's what she needed, that's what he'd be for her. I mean, if you want to. Thank you, I appreciate it. She paused, then asked, Actually, do you mind following us home? We live a few miles away. It'll just take me a few minutes to close up here. Oh, sure, that's no problem. I don't have any place to be. Thanks, Brandon. I'll explain later. I just want to get Seth home. And that's how Brandon found himself unexpectedly at Bria's apartment that afternoon. He'd soon learn it was only the beginning of many more surprising things to come. Chapter 10 Bria Bria's hands trembled as she fished in her purse for her apartment key. Beside her, Brandon and Seth waited patiently. Her son wasn't aware of the adrenaline coursing through her veins, However, she suspected Brandon knew something was up with the way his eyes kept flitting around the dim hallway. He had picked up on her fear back at the salon, and for that, she was grateful. Today was the last day she wanted to be alone. Even if Brandon wasn't cut out physically to be a bodyguard, she still felt better with him around. She needed all the help she could get now that Richard had raised the stakes. She finally found her key and opened the front door. She pushed her way through and flipped on the lights. The small one-bedroom was far from roomy or fancy, but it was all she could afford. Housing prices were sky-high in Silicon Valley, and even with the child support she received each month, she was still scraping by. Come on in, she urged Brandon. 
Sorry for the mess. I wasn't expecting company. Brandon followed them inside. No worries. Hey, buddy, would you clear some space on the couch for Brandon? Why don't you show him the books you got from the library? Okay. Seth motioned to Brandon. Come on, Mr. B. Wait till you see the next book in the series I'm reading. As the two guys settled down in the living room, Bria headed to the kitchen to clean up last night's takeout boxes. Between the physical exhaustion from work and the mental stress from Richard's calls, a lot of things around their home had fallen to the wayside. She wasn't even sure she had any food or drinks to offer Brandon. Perhaps she'd find something in one of the cupboards or in the back of the fridge. When she stepped onto the kitchen's cool linoleum floor, her heart about stopped. On the counter sat another vase of sunflowers, similar to the one delivered to her at the salon. She snatched the card attached to this bouquet and felt her blood run cold as she read it. Bria, consider this your last chance. Rethink your answer, or I will be forced to take this matter to court. You and I both know who the judge will side with. XOXO. Richard. No. Bria crumpled the note and threw it onto the counter. Who did Richard think he was? A hotshot lawyer and Seth's father? Even if he was on both accounts, that didn't mean he could threaten her like this. Her shock turned into anger as she stared at the vase of her favorite flowers. She grabbed the bouquet, opened the garbage can, and tossed them inside. She considered throwing the vase away, too, but the sound of footsteps approaching from behind stopped her. Bria? What happened? The sound of Brandon's voice, so gentle and caring, melted her defenses. She turned and shook her head, biting her lower lip to keep from crying. Seth was only a room away. She couldn't lose control now. Brandon took one look at her and stepped close. What's wrong? Can you tell me now what's bothering you? She pointed at a bunch of flower stems sticking out from the garbage can. In a hushed voice, she lamented. He snuck them in here while we were out. He's threatening to sue for custody of Seth. Hearing those words out loud made the situation more real. Bria choked back a sob and wiped at the tears forming in her eyes. He knows he can win. He who? Brandon looked at her, confused. Who's doing this? Richard. Richard? Brandon narrowed his eyes. The guy you dated senior year? She nodded. He's Seth's dad. I see. And he wants to get custody of Seth? Shaking her head, Bria stepped closer to confide in him without Seth overhearing. No, he's never wanted to be a father. He's only seen Seth a handful of times. What he really wants is a picture-perfect family before he runs for office. He's on track to becoming the youngest mayor of Newark, but he needs a wholesome image to get him there. Having a kid born out of wedlock isn't part of it. He wants me to marry him. M marry him? Just to advance his career? That's hardcore. That's Richard for you. He doesn't do things halfway, and he doesn't take no for an answer. She planted her hands on her hips. I made the mistake of going out with him a few weeks ago. Ever since then, he's been harassing me with nonstop phone calls and texts. And now this? He's crossed the line. I can't believe he got in here. I took his name off the lease a year ago when I paid him back for the down payment. A deep line formed between Brandon's brows. He crossed his arms as he listened to her. This can't be legal, can it? He's a lawyer. He knows all the laws and loopholes. He's friends with a lot of people, too. He rubs shoulders with policemen and judges. I don't know all that he's capable of, but I don't want to find out. She rubbed her hands down her arms, feeling goosebumps there even though the air was muggy inside the apartment. Brandon placed a hand on her arm. Hey, we'll figure it out. I'll help you however I can. She shook off his hand. Brandon, this is not your problem to deal with. You're my friend, Bria. So is Seth now. Please let me help you. Bria's heart clenched. Brandon had always been kind, too kind for his own good. I don't deserve your help, especially not after what I did to you. Brandon looked taken aback. 
What are you talking about? She would likely regret saying so much, but she needed to be truthful. Brandon deserved to know. The kiss we shared. I only kissed you to make Richard jealous. I had just found out the night before that he was cheating on me, so when I saw him pass us after class, I wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine. She wrung her hands together. What I did was stupid and so, so selfish. I never meant to mislead you, Brandon. I'm so sorry. He winced, dropping his gaze. His shoulders fell. His whole posture deflated. That, uh, explains a lot. I'm so sorry things ended the way they did. When I got kicked out of school the next day, I had to leave right away. I thought it was best not to keep in touch since I wouldn't be coming back. I also didn't think. Her voice faltered. I deserve to have your friendship after what I did. A pained look crossed his face. Don't say that. I did so many terrible, regretful things back then, and I'm paying the consequences now, as I should be. Rhea released a shaky breath. But I can't lose Seth. I can't let Richard get custody. Of course not. He can't separate you guys. Brandon crossed his arms as he pondered. Don't judges usually side with mothers in a case like this? Not this one. Richard's dad is friends with the judge. It's pretty much a done deal. He just needs to say the word. That's not right. It's not fair. A lot of things in life aren't fair. It certainly wasn't fair what I did to you. I still feel terrible about it. Hey, it's okay. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. She stared at him in wonder. How can you be so forgiving? He shrugged. I guess it helps to have a good imagination. I can imagine what I'd do if the tables were turned. I probably would have done the same. You don't know for sure. Even still, you have every right to be upset with me. I wouldn't blame you if you were. Brandon pursed his lips. He appeared lost in his thoughts, his expression serious. When he finally spoke, there was a playfulness in his blue eyes. How can I be upset with you when you taught me everything I know about women? I grew up with four brothers. I hadn't even really talked to a girl before I met you sophomore year. We shared some good times together as friends. Plus, he added with a wry smile, I write awesome kissing scenes because of you. It took a few seconds for his words to sink in, but when they did, she felt a weight lift from her shoulders. How had she gotten so lucky? Brandon was so humble and forgiving. She certainly didn't deserve his friendship before and still didn't now. But here he was, a tangible reminder of God's grace to her. Even during the midst of her personal crisis, she had a thread of hope to hold on to. You're an amazing person, Brandon Spark. I hope you know that. She grinned so wide her cheeks hurt. He shot her a bashful smile. It takes one to know one. Her mood lifted in that moment until her eyes landed on the vase. All her fears came flooding back in an instant. I need to change the locks. The locks? To the apartment, in case Richard tries to come in again. She shuddered at the thought. I'll need to contact the landlady and ask how soon I can get it done. I have a feeling, though, that Richard had her help getting in here. He has a way of convincing women to do whatever he wants them to do. She sighed. I'll have to find a way. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep in peace. Brandon cocked his head as he studied her. Several emotions flicked across his face, ending with compassion. You and Seth are welcome to stay at my place. What? She couldn't have heard him correctly. I have a guest bedroom, you know, for guests. You can stay until you get your locks changed. Bria was speechless. She had never imagined Brandon would be coming to her rescue. Yet, here he was, her quiet friend making a loud impact on her and Seth's lives. She was blown away by his generosity and tempted to accept his offer. After all, what could one night hurt? Chapter 11 Bria Brandon looked around his dining room table at the people seated beside and across from him. 
For the first time since he had moved in, he had had to extend the oval-shaped table to accommodate more than one person. Even when his brothers visited, they sat on the sofa, preferring a casual setting. Tonight, however, was his first formal gathering in his apartment, and he had the two most wonderful people to share it with. He never imagined in his life that he'd have Bria and her son over as guests, but here they were, sharing a meal with him. He couldn't believe how comfortable they all were eating the pasta and meatballs he had made. Now that he was in his home, he felt relaxed and at ease as well. For the most part, that is. Of course, he was disappointed about Bria's revelation earlier. What guy wouldn't be torn up to have the woman of his dreams confess she had used him to make another man jealous? Her confession stung even more because he had been holding on to the memory of their kiss for years now. It had been stored in his heart, along with all his hopes of a someday. Someday, he and Bria would meet again and rekindle their friendship. Someday, they would find a way into each other's lives and hearts. Well, that someday had come, except it was nothing like the way he had dreamed. A part of him still hoped, though. The hopelessly romantic part that still loved to watch chick flicks and daydream and imagine his own happily ever after. How else would he be able to write the kind of stories he wrote? Instead of a funny bone, God had given him a fuzzy bone, one that longed for warm fuzzies. And boy oh boy, he was feeling a lot of sentimental emotions at the moment. This is the best pasta I've ever had, Seth exclaimed as he stuck another forkful into his mouth. The end of a noodle disappeared between his pursed lips in one fluid motion. Tomato sauce splashed onto his cheeks, giving him a reddish-orange mustache. He stuck his tongue out to lick off the traces of sauce. Bria laughed and wiped away a remaining stain with her thumb. I thought you said I made the best pasta. Yours is good, Mom, but Mr. B's is better. Okay, I'll admit it. This is yummy. Wrinkling her nose, she remarked to Brandon. Care to share what's in your secret sauce? It's just a mixture of tomato and cheese sauce together. I use two jars instead of one. Nothing special, really. Brandon smiled. But I'm glad you guys like it. Well, it's a lot more special than eating frozen pizza or cereal. That's as fancy as I get most days. It's hard to have the energy to cook after a day of work, Bria lamented. But I could whip this up no problem. Thanks for the idea. Sure. I actually have a lot of pizza stocked in the freezer, too. I eat pretty simply when it's just me, but it's nice to have someone to cook for. Not as nice as it is to have someone cook for you, Bria beamed. Thanks for this, Brandon, and for letting us stay over. Hopefully the landlady will have the... She paused as she glanced Seth's way. Repairs done tomorrow. It's no problem at all. Brandon understood the reason behind Bria's casual tone and her choice of words. Seth didn't know the real reason they were staying over. She hadn't wanted to upset him, and so far, it was working. Seth didn't suspect anything was amiss. In fact, he was eating away so happily that he had finished up his entire bowl. You weren't kidding about liking this pasta, buddy. Looks like you're ready for seconds. Seth nodded eagerly. Yes, please. It's so good. One more helping of my famous pasta coming up. Brandon took Seth's bowl to the kitchen to refill it. When he returned to the table, he noticed Bria looking at her phone. Her brows furrowed as she put it back into her pocket. He set the bowl down in front of Seth, then turned to Bria. Everything okay? Yeah, I was just checking my schedule for tomorrow. Thursdays are usually packed. She propped her chin on one hand as she thought. Seth, did you bring any books? I have a full day of clients tomorrow, so we'll be at the salon from nine to four. Seth sighed. Yeah, I brought two. I'll try to read as slowly as I can so I don't run out. Brandon took in their exchange. It couldn't be fun for a kid to be stuck in a salon all day. Granted, he had been a bookworm when he was young, too, and preferred to stay indoors. But that was in the comfort of his home. A whole day surrounded by the loud whirring of blow dryers and the strong smell of hair care products would hardly be pleasant. Would it be okay if Seth stayed with me? 
I could take him to the library and we could go have ice cream at my brother Colin's shop. We could even take a trip to the fire station where Darren works. I think it'd be a lot more fun than being cooped up in a hair salon all day. No offense to hair salons or the people who work in them, he added quickly. Seth's eyes lit up. He bounced in his chair and gave his mom a pleading look. Can I, Mom? Please? That would be so cool. Bria gave Brandon a curious grin. That would be cool. But don't you have things to do, like writing a book? I can work at night. My schedule's pretty flexible when I'm in between stories. You write books? I do. The awe and wonder in Seth's voice made Brandon's chest puff up. No one had ever made him sound like a hero. For once in his life, he had a little taste of the acclaim Darren got when he was in uniform. He had to admit, it felt good to be admired for doing something he loved. Yep, I'm an author. You didn't tell me Mr. B writes books? Seth shot his mom an accusing look. I can't believe you know a real author. That's so cool. Bria smiled wryly at Brandon. Apparently, this isn't the first time I've been guilty of hiding your identity. I guess I should get used to having a celebrity as a friend. She turned to Seth with a pointed look. I forgot to mention it, but why do you sound so surprised? You should know I'm a lot cooler than you give me credit for. Seth chuckled. Maybe a little. It's true. Brandon jumped in. Your mom is way cool. She took me to see my first shooting star when we were in college. We went up to the top of a hill and waited for hours. I almost wanted to give up, but she told me it'd be worth the wait, and it was. I forgot about that, Bria mused with a small smile. We sure had an adventure. Can we go sometime, Mom? I want to see one, too. She nodded. Sure thing, bud. We'll figure out a time. She set her fork down and yawned. I'm beat. I'm going to crash as soon as my head hits the pillow. It's still early, Mom, Seth pouted. There's a whole hour before bedtime. Brandon checked his watch. It was only half past seven, but he could see Bria was having a hard time keeping her eyes open. She seemed to have dropped her guard as soon as she and Seth had stepped inside his home. He could only imagine the stress she had been under recently due to Richard's threats. Not to mention the last decade living as a single mom. Do you want to turn in first, Bria? Seth can help me clean up and maybe we can watch a movie together. Yeah, Seth agreed, his blue eyes shining with delight. I'll help Mr. B. You go to sleep, Mom. Bria stifled another yawn with her hand. At least let me bring the dishes to the sink. She stood and proceeded to gather up their utensils and bowls. Brandon placed a hand on her arm. I've got this. Why don't you go get ready for bed? His tone was firmer than he intended, but he had a sudden urge to care for, even protect, Bria. She was a tough woman, or she tried hard to be, but it was obvious she needed a break. You've had a long day, and you have another one tomorrow. You should sleep. Bria blinked in surprise. All right, if you insist. She raised her hands in surrender and backed away from the table. Be sure not to stay up too late, Seth. It's summer vacation, Mom. You still need your beauty sleep, young man. She pointed to the dark circles under her eyes. See what happens when you don't sleep enough? You end up looking like a panda. She puffed up her cheeks and widened her eyes in an exaggerated expression, making Seth laugh. Brandon joined in on their laughter. Despite her tiredness, Bria was still the fun-loving girl he used to know. She had made him laugh often, especially when they were supposed to be studying, and she had pushed him out of his comfort zone more than once. He failed to mention to Seth that she had made him hike up a steep hill to watch for shooting stars, and that he had gotten poison ivy when he tripped in the dark and fell into a bush. He never went hiking again after that episode. That was another reason why he preferred the indoors. He took in Bria's relaxed posture and marveled at how carefree she appeared compared to a few hours ago. If only he could bottle up all her worries and throw them into the sea. Sure, she had made some bad choices in the past, but she shouldn't have to be paying for them now. He could tell she was trying her best to make a life for her and Seth. 
His heart longed to see her happy. In that moment, he made up his mind to do anything and everything possible in his power to help Bria. Even if he couldn't be her leading man, he could still play the part of a hero for her and Seth. Chapter 12 Bria Bria took off her apron and hung it on one of the hooks on the back wall of the salon. Releasing a long breath, she raised her arms over her head and did a few stretches. It had been a tiring but productive day, the kind she liked best. Her clients had all shown up, and most of them had tipped her generously. It had also been nice not having to worry about Seth while she worked. She had called Brandon at lunchtime and gotten a detailed update on their plans for the day. First, lunch at a neighborhood pizza parlor, followed by a trip to the library, and then a stop for ice cream. Seth had sounded beyond thrilled to be spending the day with Mr. B, as he liked to call Brandon. Knowing her son was well taken care of and happy made her feet ache a little less. Bria was beyond grateful to her old friend. God was certainly blessing her and Seth through Brandon. He was such a good guy, with such a good heart. He truly deserved a good woman. Amazingly enough, no one had snatched him up yet. Perhaps it was because he hadn't put himself out on the playing field because of her. She sighed, knowing that was the case. She had seen the disappointment in his eyes when she had revealed the real motive behind their kiss. He truly was a romantic, innocent and optimistic. A man like him was hard to find. A woman who could compare to him even harder. No wonder he hadn't met his match. But surely God could provide someone suitable for him. With this prayer for Brandon in mind, Bria made her way around a couple of small piles of hair lying on the linoleum floor to the front of the salon. There, she flipped over the open sign on the door, which blocked out the afternoon sunshine streaming in through the glass. She was grateful for these long summer days. She felt safer at the salon alone when it was still light out. There would also be plenty of time to spend with Seth after she finished sweeping and tidying up the place. She gripped the doorknob, ready to turn the lock when her cell phone sounded. She hurried over to the back of the shop where she had left her purse. She fished her phone out and immediately cringed. The number that flashed across the screen caused her blood pressure to rise. She answered the call with a curt hello. Yes? Sweetheart, where are your manners? It's customary for people to return phone calls and texts in a timely manner. Richard's low voice dripped with sarcasm. I sure hope you're teaching our son to behave better than this. What do you want? He cackled, unmoved by the coldness in her tone. You know very well what I want. I've made myself clear. It's you who keeps dodging the question. So what will it be? Are you ready to marry the next mayor of Newark? Bria scoffed. Not if you were the last man alive. You have no idea what marriage, or love for that matter, is about. I'm not interested in your political schemes. And you have no right to blackmail me to do your bidding. I'm sure the city would never vote for you if they knew what you were up to. My, my, Bria. Do you hear yourself? Look who's blackmailing who now. I would be careful with what you say. The judge presiding over our custody battle would be very interested in hearing this conversation. Bria felt her pulse pounding in her ears. The nerve of this man. I'm not dumb, Richard. I'm pretty sure it's illegal to record phone conversations without consent. Yes, but it's considered a gray area if the conversation is held in a public area, such as a place of business. The hair on the back of Bria's neck stood up. Richard's voice sounded awfully clear and close now. She spun around and spotted his Cheshire cat grin five feet away. Her phone slipped out of her hand and dropped to the ground with a loud clatter. What? How did you get in here? Didn't you see the closed sign? Richard shrugged, then placed his phone in his suit pocket. The door wasn't locked. You are unbelievable. Bria chastised herself for not locking it when she had the chance. Now she was stuck inside the salon with the one person she feared the most. Lord, help. She prayed for protection and wisdom. It would take an act of God for her to get the upper hand in this situation. You always did find me astonishing. He touted with a glint in his green eyes. 
Bria didn't even want to justify his comment with a response. Instead, she picked up her phone and purse and set her eyes on the front door. She moved quickly, skirting her way around her ex-boyfriend. This was one time Richard's large six-foot-four frame worked against him. He moved much slower than Bria did and only turned around when she was already through the door. Once she was on the other side, she allowed herself to breathe. She held the door open and narrowed her eyes at Richard. We are officially closed. I suggest you get out of the salon unless you'd like to be locked in. Richard lifted his chin defiantly as he sauntered outside. You may think you're funny, but the judge certainly won't. He's going to side with me in our custody case. How are you going to show your involvement as a parent when you don't even make time for Seth? I'm the one who helps him with his homework and tucks him in at night. I take him to all his appointments and attend his parent-teacher conferences. You don't have anything to show for and you know that. She let the door swing shut, then locked it. I suggest you give up now. Seth is my son, and he's not going anywhere. Richard reached inside his suit jacket and pulled out a white letter-sized envelope. He handed it to her with a haughty smile. You may want to rethink your decision, Bria. She accepted the envelope with shaky hands. As she pulled out the letter inside, her heart sank. Across the top of the form read the words, Complaint for Custody. What is this? The papers you'll be served Monday when our custody case is opened. Richard crossed his arms. Unless you've decided to change your mind about my offer. His offer? It was more of an ultimatum. She stared up at him, wondering what she had ever seen in this man. Richard might appear strong and confident on the outside, but he was weak and insecure on the inside. Only a bully would pick on someone much smaller than himself. What he had, the name, wealth, and social connections, couldn't make up for all that he lacked, namely, a heart. He had nothing on Brandon in terms of compassion and generosity. This thought took her aback. For once, Bria recognized the power and strength a gentle man could offer. Brandon would never back her into a corner or demand something from her that she couldn't give. He was such a kind man, and any woman would be blessed to have him in her life, including her. The sudden realization caught her off guard. A whirlwind of emotions, from surprise to confusion to contentment, bombarded her. She stood paralyzed in place, trying to make sense of everything going on in her heart. Richard bellowed, What'll it be? Bria bit her lip and then sputtered, I, I can't marry you. I'm engaged to someone else. The words left her lips before she realized what she had said. She swallowed hard, not believing the Pandora's box she had just opened. She tried hard to keep her hands steady as she stuffed the letter into the envelope and handed it back to Richard. Richard threw his head back with a loud laugh. When he calmed down, he narrowed his eyes at Bria. You expect me to believe that? When have you had time to date, let alone meet a man? I reconnected with an old friend recently. Everything came together quickly, but it made sense since we already knew each other so well. His name's Brandon. You might remember him from our English study group. An inexplicable peace overcame her as she said Brandon's name. She found herself standing up straighter with more confidence. Seth likes him too. They get along really well. Brandon? With his brows high on his forehead, Richard remarked, That skinny kid you kissed to make me jealous? You want me to believe you'd rather be with him than with me? Of course. Bria crossed her arms, her bare skin hot from the summer sun shining overhead. The heat, however, didn't compare to the anger burning inside her. How could Richard dismiss Brandon just because he wasn't as tall or brawny as him? She spoke her next words with conviction. There's a lot more to a man than his looks. Brandon has character, something you sorely lack. He treats me and Seth with care and respect. You have no clue how to treat a woman or your child. It's a no-brainer who I'd choose. He scoffed. You're telling me this guy is so in love with you that he proposed already? She nodded readily, knowing this part. At least half of it was true. Yes. He eyed her suspiciously. Then where's the ring? 
Huh? The engagement ring. If this guy's as crazy about you as you say he is, he would have given you a ring. He paused as a sly grin spread across his lips. Unless you're making all of this up. The rational part of her brain wanted to confess this was all a scam, but the fearful part spun even faster as it conjured up more imaginary details. It's at the jeweler's being resized. But seriously, I don't need a piece of metal to know Brandon's committed. He already asked me and Seth to move in with him. We're staying there now, as a matter of fact. Separate bedrooms, of course, until the wedding, she added with a bit of haughtiness herself. When exactly is the big day? Because come Monday, things are going to get messy. However, if you're married by then, I'll certainly back off. That includes all child support as well. He finished with a sneer. Bria gasped. What had she done? Without Richard's monthly checks, she wouldn't be able to provide Seth with a home. But with his money, she might not have a son to come home to. Either way, she couldn't win. Oh, she needed the Lord's help more than ever. How would he come through for her this time? Chapter 13 Brandon Brandon turned the faucet to low as he rinsed off a dinner plate. He strained his ear to listen in on the conversation going on in the next room, or half of the conversation. Bria was on the phone with her friend Amy, talking in a hushed voice. An occasional sniffle punctuated her words. It was the latter that caught his attention and led him to eavesdropping. It wasn't his finest moment, but he couldn't help himself. He cared too much about her not to be concerned. She hadn't been herself since she returned from the salon. When Seth recounted their day's activities to her, she'd forced out a small smile. Gone was her relaxed demeanor from yesterday, and he wanted to know why. But being the quiet, low-key guy that he was, he didn't know if he should come straight out and ask. He had just started feeling more comfortable around Bria. In other words, he had stopped blushing in her presence. If he stuck his nose in her business, who knew how she'd react? He put the last of the dirty dishes into the dishwasher, stuck a detergent packet in, and turned on the machine. With a kitchen towel he grabbed off a hook, he dried his hands, then wiped up some traces of milk on the counter that Seth had spilled earlier. Brandon smiled, remembering the fun they had had together that day. It was amazing how alike he and Seth were. When there were books around, neither one of them needed to talk. Yet, their conversation also flowed freely at other times. The server at the pizza place had even remarked how much they resembled one another. He hadn't had the heart to correct her, especially with Seth beaming by his side. His chest ached, thinking about the young boy. How could a father not want a relationship with his child? Knowing how much his own dad cared for him and his brothers made him dislike Richard even more now than he had in college. The only reason he made nice with him back then was because of Bria. Speaking of Richard, Brandon thought he heard Bria mention his name. He edged closer to the doorway leading to the living room and peeked over. Please pray for him, Amy. Only God can change his heart. Bria glanced in the direction of the kitchen. I have to go. Thanks for listening. Brandon heard footsteps approach and quickly stepped back inside the kitchen. He opened the refrigerator and pretended to look inside. The air escaping the interior brought relief to his warm cheeks. Hopefully he didn't look as guilty as he felt. Bria's face appeared over the top of the door, her eyes puffy and red. Brandon, can we talk? Of course. He shut the door behind him and motioned for them to go to the next room. He had no idea what Bria had in mind, but he assumed it would be a long conversation based on her emotional state. Do you want to sit on the sofa? She glanced over her shoulder toward the guest room where Seth was sleeping. Do you mind if we go to your room? I'd appreciate the privacy. Oh, yeah, that's fine. He led the way down the hall, his heart pounding with every step. He'd never had a woman in his apartment, much less in his bedroom. This wasn't just any woman either. It was Bria. The thought of the two of them alone in the tiny space made his palms sweat. He wiped his hands along his khaki shorts as he entered the room and flipped on the light. Bria entered and closed the door behind her. 
After taking a few steps inside, she reached the queen-size bed and ran her hand along the navy bedspread that Brandon had laid out neatly that morning. She smiled and remarked, You still make your bed every day? He nodded. Of course. My mom taught us boys well. It's so ingrained in me, I'd do it without thinking. She sat down and glanced around the room. You were always the responsible one. Too bad I didn't listen to you when we were younger. It would have saved me a lot of heartache. She choked on her words. Then and now. Brandon rushed to her side and sat down beside her. By now, her tears were falling fast and furious. He had never seen her cry like this. Sure, he had witnessed her tears of frustration after flunking a midterm, but this was on a whole new level. She wept as if she were grieving. He grabbed a tissue box sitting on the nightstand and offered it to her. Here, take your time. Sometimes it's good to just cry it out. She grabbed a tissue and offered him a small smile of gratitude. You always know the right things to say. He shrugged, not knowing how to receive her compliment. He was only doing what he knew how to do, be her friend. It's something my dad used to tell me when I was a kid. I tended to take things too personally sometimes. It's one of the downsides of being sensitive. A pained look crossed her face. I wish some people were more sensitive. Are you referring to someone in particular? Richard. She spat the word out in disdain. He stopped by the salon today with more threats. It's like he won't give me a break. And I think I made things worse. A lot worse. Turning toward him, she hung her head. I know this isn't your problem to deal with. I just didn't know what else to do. Amy suggested I talk to you and see if you have any ideas. She said you always figure a way out for your characters when they're in a conflict. I can try. I certainly don't mind listening. He faced her, causing their knees to bump. The simple touch of her bare skin against his made his mouth go dry. He needed to get it together, for Bria's sake. He scooted back a little and nodded for her to continue. What happened? He came by with a copy of the custody letter he's going to have served to me if I don't fall in line with his plan. Seeing it made everything that much more real, so I panicked. I said something crazy. He nodded for her to continue. I told him I couldn't marry him because I'm already engaged to someone else. Meeting his gaze, she quietly added, To you. To m me? Brandon almost fell off the bed. You told him you're marrying me? I know it was a stupid thing to say. I didn't mean to drag you into this. I just had to find a way out, and now... She wiped a tear away. He expects to see a copy of the marriage certificate by Monday. Monday? That's in four days. Richard's smart. He knows I'm lying, so he's not making it easy for me to get out of this. But that's not the worst part. He basically wants nothing to do with Seth after that point. If I marry someone else, he's going to sign away his parental rights and stop paying child support. She crumpled the tissue in her hands. It's not so much about the money, though we need it. It's more about him not wanting a relationship with his own son. It'll break Seth's heart to know this. How am I supposed to tell him his own father doesn't want him? Brandon took a deep breath. His head was spinning at all that Bria had confessed. He didn't know which part concerned him more. The fact that he and Bria were supposedly engaged, or that Richard would forsake his only child. Quiet sobs interrupted his thoughts, drawing his attention to the woman next to him. Already a petite woman, Bria appeared even smaller and more vulnerable. The sight of her moved him so much, he surprised himself by drawing her into his arms. With her tucked against his chest, he rested his chin on her hair. It's okay. We'll figure something out. We're not alone, Bria. God is on our side. In the book of Psalm, it says he's a father to the fatherless. He'll always be there for Seth and he's a much better father than Richard ever could be. She nodded but continued to sob. Not knowing what else to say, Brandon held her. He rubbed her back the way his dad used to rub his when he had had a bad day. He understood the power of a gentle touch and the value of giving someone the space to just be. Sometimes that peace and support meant more than words could say. 
so he allowed Bria to rest in his arms. He had to admit he was enjoying the moment, too, probably more than he should. The sweet scent of her shampoo, the softness of her skin against his, this moment was like his dreams, except better. He never imagined one day being able to offer security and protection to Bria, like the alpha males he wrote about. It felt surprisingly natural. Perhaps there was a part of his characters in him, after all. After a few minutes, Bria drew back and looked up at him. Her smile was genuine and hopeful. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for reminding me I'm not alone and that Seth's not alone. It's so easy to rely on myself. That's what I did all through my 20s. Even though I knew God was there, I didn't feel like I deserved his help after the ways I had disobeyed him. But don't you still love Seth, even when he doesn't listen to you? Of course I do, but he rarely disobeys me. Her mouth twisted to one side. He's such a good kid. I think it would hurt me even more if he were to go against my wishes because I don't expect him to. Just like how I was such a good kid before I went to college. I'm sure I disappointed God so much more when I rebelled because it was so unexpected. That's not true. Brandon felt a burning in his heart to speak the truth to Bria. He already knew what you'd do, and he still sent Jesus to die for you. And even if he was disappointed, it was because of how much he loves you. Just like how you feel about Seth. She paused, seeming to ponder his words. You're right. You're absolutely right. I grew up learning these truths, but for some reason, I believe them more when you say them. Her eyes brightened. When did you get so wise? I always was, he joked. I just don't always say what I'm thinking. She sighed, a wistful smile on her lips. I've missed having you in my life, Bran. I really messed up when I let go of our friendship. I'm sorry. Brandon shook his head. It's okay, you had a lot going on. I probably wasn't mature enough to have helped you back then. Oh, but you were. You're even more mature now. Thank you for everything you're doing for me and Seth. It's no problem. I wish I could do more, though. As soon as the words were out of his mouth, a light bulb went off in his head. It was one of those aha moments he had when he figured out a plot twist to a story, except this one was crazier than he had ever written. But if he wanted to help his friend, he needed to step up his game, big time. Actually, there is something I can do to help. What? He faced Bria and uttered the two words he never thought he'd say out loud. Marry me. Chapter 14 Bria Bria blinked twice. Brandon's offer was so outrageous she almost laughed. The only thing stopping her was his serious expression. Do you know what you just proposed? I mean, wait, you actually did propose. She bit her lower lip as she digested those two words that had flowed out of him so effortlessly. I made our engagement up, Brandon. I don't expect you to really marry me. It's the only way you can prove to Richard that you don't need him. He paused. This isn't anything new. Authors use this trope all the time in romance books. It's called a marriage of convenience. Two people get married for one reason or another. To secure an inheritance, to get citizenship, to improve one's reputation. Like what Richard's doing. Bria cut in, nodding eagerly. Her eyes grew wide as the pieces began falling into place. Brandon was suggesting they level the playing field by going along with Richard's game. And you're saying we do the same? It's the best way to stop him from harassing you. He said he'd leave you and Seth alone if you get married. It's your way out, Bria. It was a wild, far-fetched plan, but it might be the best one they had. Even still, she couldn't believe she was entertaining the idea. This is crazy, but brilliant. But it'd mean getting married tomorrow. How in the world would we pull that off? Brandon's smile came easily. It's a good thing I write romance. I did all the research on this for one of my books. We can get the marriage license and do the ceremony at San Francisco City Hall. They perform weddings on weekdays from 9 until 3.30, every half hour. Oh, wow. 
I had no idea it was that easy. Bria stood up and began walking the length of the small bedroom. She stopped when she reached the closet door and was forced to turn around. Digging her toes into the carpet, she spun in place. She paced back and forth this way for a few moments as reality began sinking in. This wasn't right. How could she use Brandon again for her own selfish gain? She faced him and shook her head. Brandon, I can't let you do this. I'll find another way. I'll petition for another judge to handle the custody case or file for a restraining order against Richard. There must be another way. Her voice broke as she considered engaging in a long, drawn-out battle with Richard. Who was she to stand up against the district attorney? She suddenly felt very small and helpless. Strangely enough, she found herself missing the comfort of Brandon's arms. The way he had held her minutes before brought her more peace than she had known in a long time. As if Brandon could read her mind, he rose from the bed and joined her where she stood near the dresser. He placed a hand on her shoulder and held her gaze. No one's forcing me to do this. I want to help you and Seth. Please let me. His words were like a balm for her soul, warming her from the inside out. Her skin heated, especially where his palm rested at the edge of her sleeveless top. She glanced over at his hand, noticing for the first time how masculine his fingers were. His hand was larger than she remembered from their college days so strong and capable. No wonder she had felt comfortable when he'd held her. She'd always felt safe around Brandon, but this was a new level of security, one that caused flutters in her stomach. Or maybe it was the bean burrito she had eaten for lunch. It had to be, she reasoned with herself. That was the only explanation that made sense for these new feelings she was having for her old friend. When she didn't answer, Brandon dropped his hand and stepped back. I know you want to think about this, but we honestly don't have much time. The sooner we decide, the sooner I can make an appointment online. I have a feeling Friday is their busiest day for weddings. Brandon's words registered in her brain when he stopped touching her. She inhaled quickly, suddenly aware of how his closeness affected her. His plan was insane, but the idea of marrying him wasn't as scary as the other possibilities that awaited her. In fact, it wasn't scary at all. It was clear now that God was changing her heart. She had never seen Brandon as more than her former study buddy, but for some unexpected reason she was open to marrying him. Practically speaking, there was no man she trusted more. He was kind, honest, and dependable. She knew he would never intentionally hurt her. Instead, he was going out of his way and inconveniencing himself for her sake. He understood love to the extent that he was willing to lay down his life for his friend. Sure, it wasn't a literal sacrificing of his life, but marriage was a lifetime commitment. This was about as close as it got. Romantically speaking, though, well, if the sudden spark she'd experienced just now were any indication of their physical chemistry, she needn't worry. Those feelings could certainly build over time. There was so much to consider, though. So much that would change if they became husband and wife. She wouldn't be a single mom anymore. Oh, what are we going to tell Seth? He just met you and now we're supposed to tell him you and I are getting married? This just about tops the list of things parents would never want their kids to do. I see your point. Brandon rubbed his chin as he thought. What if we don't tell him yet? We'll just let him know that you guys need to find a new place to live and you'll be staying with me until you do? You want us to move in with you? You'll have to. It won't do you any good if Richard shows up at your apartment and wonders why we're not living together when we're married. We'll need to make it look believable. Bria attempted to take a deep breath. This was starting to sound a lot more complicated than she imagined. She didn't mind the changes. Brandon's place was so much nicer than hers but how could she upend Seth's life like this? If we move, Seth will need to change schools. I don't know if that's a good idea. He has such a hard time making friends. All he does is sit in the library every day during lunch. I get it. It may be hard to imagine, he grinned, but I was the same way when I was younger. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. 
We shouldn't worry about the future when there's enough to worry about today. I think the most urgent thing right now is to check if City Hall has openings for tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow. Do you think you can take the day off and find someone to watch Seth? I have a couple of appointments booked, but I'll call and reschedule for next week. I'll ask Amy if she can watch Seth for a few hours. Great. Then let's make our appointments. Brandon grabbed his laptop off the side table and opened it. He sat on the bed and motioned for Bria to sit next to him. Bria peered over his shoulder as he opened a new browser and typed in sfgov.org. After navigating through a few screens, Brandon found the page that read Office of the County Clerk and clicked on the drop-down bar under Services for Marriage. At the bottom of the page, he hovered the cursor over a large green button that read Book Now in capital letters. He chuckled. It's like we're making a reservation for dinner. A very important dinner, she joked. Definitely. He paused as he took a deep breath. Are you ready to get a table for two? When Brandon turned to look at her, Bria felt the same tickly feeling in her stomach again. It wasn't surprising or strange this time. It was pleasant. Realizing this gave her the assurance to nod in agreement. He clicked on the green button. Another page appeared with fields asking for their personal information. He filled in the blanks and continued to the page with the schedule for the next day. Fortunately, there were two open slots remaining, one at 12 to get their license, the other at 12.30 for the actual ceremony. Brandon turned to her and remarked, I guess no one wants to get married at lunchtime. Do you mind if we grab a quick bite on our way there? That's fine. We don't have much of a choice, do we? No, but I'm thankful there are still openings for tomorrow. Looks like God's paving a way for us. He must be. Bria breathed a sigh of relief as Brandon booked the appointments. With each click of the mouse, she felt a weight lift from her shoulders. She was finally going to be free from the consequences that had been haunting her for the past decade. Both she and Seth would be able to have a new start in life without Richard's threats hanging over their heads. This seems too good to be true. Brandon smiled as he patted her knee. It does, doesn't it? Just one more button to click, and we'll be all set. Bria's entire body warmed from his touch, causing her face to flush. Now she was the one blushing while Brandon remained cool and collected. Funny how they had switched roles. I think this is the right thing to do, but I can't help feeling nervous. He eyed her with concern. There's no need to be. It's not like we're signing our lives away. She begged to differ. Marriage was a lifetime commitment. How could he remain calm? But by this time tomorrow we'll be married. Like, actually be husband and wife. Sure, he agreed. But it's only temporary. As soon as things settle down with Richard, we'll get an annulment. Bria blinked. An annulment? It'll be like the marriage never happened. That way you won't be stuck with me for the rest of your life. He nudged her arm playfully before hitting the submit button. Uh... Of course. Bria hoped the waver in her voice didn't betray her true feelings. Disappointment formed in the pit of her stomach like a boulder. What had she been thinking? This was a marriage on paper only. She had been foolish to assume Brandon would want anything more, especially after the way she had taken him for granted in the past. No wonder she didn't enjoy reading romance novels. Her life would never be as picture-perfect as the kind of stories Brandon wrote. She'd lost her chance at her own happy ending, and she had no choice but to accept this fact. Chapter 15 Brandon Brandon placed a hand on Seth's shoulder as he walked him up the steps to the two-story condo. He had offered to drop Seth off at Amy's since he had several errands to run on this Friday morning, his wedding day. Bria had already told Seth that she and Brandon would be running errands and getting ready to move them into his home. Seth had accepted the situation with no qualms and seemed okay, even excited, about the change. When they reached the doorstep, Brandon paused and knelt in front of Seth. Smiling up at the young boy who reminded him so much of himself, he stated, Your mom and I will be back to pick you up in a few hours. If you need anything, just ask Miss Amy. You can also call us any time, even just to say hi. Seth nodded. 
his blue eyes trained on Brandon's face. He pushed his lips together as if he were trying to decide how to respond. When he spoke, his expression was serious. I'll be okay, Mr. B. It's my first time at Miss Amy's place, but I know she's nice. This isn't half as scary as going to the sandwich shop by myself. Brandon's chest swelled with pride. Seth wasn't his son, but he had a glimpse of what it must feel like to be a parent. It wasn't easy for anyone, much less a child, to overcome his fears. He placed both hands on Seth's shoulders and smiled. You're very brave, Seth. Much braver than I was when I was your age. But it's okay if you feel scared. I always pray for God's help when I am. He's always there for us when we need him. We just need to ask. Remember that, okay? Seth nodded readily, his blonde hair falling into his eyes. I know. Good. Brandon rose and knocked on the door. Footsteps approached before a female voice called out on the other side. Who is it? Hi, Amy. It's Brandon. Brandon Spark, I've brought Seth over. The door swung open to reveal a woman with a bright smile on her face. Mr. Spark, it's good to hear your beautiful voice again. Brandon shook her outstretched hand. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for having Seth over. It's no problem at all. Hi there, Seth. Amy greeted him. I heard you brought some books with you. I have a comfy beanbag chair all ready for you to read on. She stepped aside and motioned for the boy to enter. Seth glanced up at Brandon before he inched forward. Thank you, he murmured as he passed Amy. Brandon gave Seth a thumbs up when he turned around. We'll be back in a few hours. If you need anything, Amy, don't hesitate to call Bria. Will do. You two take your time. Enjoy your day together. Thanks. I'll see you soon, buddy. He called out to Seth before heading back down the driveway. He paused, however, when the sound of soft footsteps came running after him. He turned around in time to see Seth bound up and throw his arms around his waist. Hey, what's wrong? Seth let go and looked up. Nothing. I just wanted to say bye again. Brandon reached out to ruffle his blonde locks. This little boy was quickly worming his way into his heart. Big time. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I also wanted to say, I hope you and my mom have a good date. He punctuated his sentence with a wide grin before running back to Amy's house. What just happened? Brandon shook his head in amusement. Where had Seth gotten the idea he and Bria were going on a date? And what did a nine-year-old know about dating anyway? He'd have to tell Bria about this one. He was sure she'd have a good laugh over her son's comment. He made his way to his car and pulled back onto the road. As he drove, he reflected on the situation at hand and almost laughed. For once, his real life was a lot stranger and more entertaining than the fiction he wrote. He was marrying Bria today. Sure, it wasn't happening the way he had always hoped, but he'd come to accept that the chances of his dreams coming true were zero to none. He'd concluded this over the past few days. Having Bria over had reinforced the fact that she only saw him as a friend, maybe even a brother. There were no signs of flirtation on her part as far as he could tell, and he had written enough about lingering looks and intentional body contact to know when a woman was interested in a man. Bria did none of these things, so he had given up on hoping anymore. Once in the friend zone, always in the friend zone. Therefore, as Bria's good friend, he had decided to help her however he could. His offer wasn't the most conventional one, but it would work. It had been worth it to see the relief on her face when he brought up a marriage of convenience, and to further lessen her worries, he had reassured her the union would be only temporary. He had never associated the word temporary with marriage. He believed in love lasting for a lifetime. That's how his stories always ended. But this situation wasn't cookie-cutter or picture-perfect. Far from it. Which meant their choices were limited and less than ideal. An annulment, however, provided a less jarring way out of the marriage. That's what he told himself, and what he had tried to convince his brothers of when he confided in their group chat about marrying Bria. Colin had congratulated him right away. Darren had reassured him he was doing the right thing. Evan had simply responded with three emojis, a thumbs up, 
one of a man and a woman with kissy faces and a pregnant woman. He didn't want to consider what their youngest brother was implying with that last emoji. Evan had been making them all a bit concerned lately with the questionable things his character on TV was engaging in. Aiden, however, had been silent for the longest time. Brandon could sense his disapproval through the phone. Those three dots showing his older brother typing out a message had appeared on his screen, disappeared, then reappeared. When his text finally came through, it said, Did you tell mom and dad? Brandon had released a long, heavy breath then, just as he was doing now as he pulled up to the front of Aiden's home. He parked and made his way up the steps to his brother's former bachelor pad. Since Aiden had started dating, he'd put away his video gaming systems and gotten some colorful throw pillows to liven up the place. He had also returned to his musical roots and begun writing and recording new songs for a solo record. A tall man with dark brown hair opened the door and welcomed him inside. Aiden's broad shoulders filled out a black leather jacket that was paired with a white button-down shirt and black slacks. He led Brandon to his bedroom closet, where he removed a couple of suits and placed them on his bed. Take your pick. Thanks, bro. Brandon kept his tone light as he picked up the first suit, a dark gray one with a light blue dress shirt, and tried them on. He appreciated Aiden letting him borrow an outfit for the wedding ceremony, even if he didn't support his decision to marry. He would probably be just as concerned, if not more, had their roles been reversed. What do you think? The jacket's a little wide in the shoulders, but it's more formal than anything I own. It works. Aiden smoothed the lapels down and met his gaze. Are you sure you want to do this, Brandon? As sure as I've ever been of anything. Aiden's eyes narrowed. How do you know Bree is telling you the truth? She could be using you again like she did in college. Brandon winced. He hated to be reminded of that kiss. He probably should have kept that bit of information to himself, but it was too late now. As he expected, his older brother was skeptical of the whole situation. He, on the other hand, had read and written enough romance stories to not be concerned. Or maybe he was so in love with Bria that he'd do anything for her. Either way, they had an appointment at City Hall in two and a half hours, and there was no time to hesitate. I know her. She and Seth need my help, and I need yours, Aiden. You're still coming with us to be our witness, right? We can't get married without you. Aiden nodded, his lips drawn into a tight line. Of course. You know I have your back. You were there for me through some of my worst days. I'm going to be there for yours. Brandon forced a laugh. You make it sound like I'm dying. This is my wedding day. It's supposed to be one of the best days of my life. Need I remind you this is a pretend wedding? Aiden shook his head. I have half a mind to tell mom and dad about this so they can talk some sense into you. But you're a grown man. You're old enough to make your own mis... choices. He corrected himself. I just don't want to see you get hurt, Bran. I know, he replied simply. You don't have to worry, though. I don't expect anything to come of this. I'm just helping a good friend out. I don't have any expectations. Aiden smirked. Sure you don't. Your head is perfectly fine with the idea of marrying the woman of your dreams and having her live with you and letting her go one day. But your heart, Bran, it's your heart I worry about. Don't you remember how you cried every day for a month after Shelley passed away? I don't want to imagine what'll happen when this quote-unquote marriage ends. It had been years since Brandon had thought about their childhood pet, but the mere mention of the small aquatic turtle made his chest twinge. He had loved that turtle. It had been his closest companion whenever he was lonely. Despite having four brothers, he felt like that cold-hearted reptile understood him the best. They had both been content to hide away in their shells when life got too loud or rough. If Shelley had taught him anything, though, it was that some people were worth coming out of your shell for. Perhaps he was asking to get his heart broken, but that was the price of loving someone. As the great poet Lord Tennyson said, it was better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. At least, that's what Brandon told himself throughout the day when he found himself feeling too much for the woman who would become his wife. Chapter 16 
Bria. Bria took a shaky breath as she stood in the center of the city hall's rotunda. The enormity of the building made her feel as small as an ant. Everything from the intricately patterned floors and the oblong-shaped archways on both sides of the room to the grand staircase leading up to the second story held an air of complexity. At the center of it all was a domed ceiling that showcased an elaborate floral design bathed in sunlight from the adjacent windows. The beauty of the dome stole Bria's breath away, and for a moment, she forgot her nerves. The queasiness in her stomach returned immediately, however, when she glanced at the man waiting beside her. She almost hadn't recognized Brandon when he came back from dropping Seth off at Amy's that morning. She had done a double take as she had climbed into the passenger seat of his car. She had never seen him in anything more than jeans and t-shirts, which made his transformation even more drastic. It wasn't just his fancy suit, it was how the clothes made him appear, taller and more confident. Whoever said clothes made a man wasn't kidding. Her feelings toward Brandon had already moved past the friend zone last night, but today they were off the charts. Her heart was beating so fast it must have been pumping all her blood into her cheeks because her face felt like it was on fire. This was how she had felt as a teenager when she saw her favorite boy band in concert, and the lead singer had winked at her. It should have been her reaction to seeing that same guy, Aiden Spark, in the back seat of Brandon's car earlier, but nope. The only man she had eyes for was her old friend, the man she would soon be marrying. The very thought made her swoon. Bria, are you feeling okay? Brandon's blue eyes were wide with concern. You look like you're about to faint. The hand he placed on her bare elbow almost made his words come true. Bria grabbed onto his arm to steady herself. Touching Brandon was not the smartest thing to do, but she had no other options if she didn't want to keel over. I'm f fine. Just a little woozy, probably since we didn't eat lunch yet. She quickly added as an excuse. I'm sorry we ran out of time. I had no idea it'd take so long to drive into the city. I should have accounted for the lunchtime traffic. He patted his jacket pockets until he found what he was looking for. He produced a granola bar, opened the wrapper, and handed it to her. Here, eat this. I have some crackers in the car, too. Do you want me to get them? Grateful, Bria took the bar and bit into it. She shook her head in between bites of the sweet and salty snack. No, this is perfect. Thanks, Brandon. You're a lifesaver. It's just a granola bar. Crinkles appeared around his eyes as he smiled bashfully. It's not like I saved you from a burning building. I leave that kind of stuff to Darren. She cocked her head as she studied him. She wished he didn't put himself down like that. You should give yourself more credit. You're marrying me today, for goodness sake. That's pretty hero-worthy if you ask me. His eyes held hers for an extra beat before his gaze fell to the ground. Marrying you isn't a sacrifice at all. Any man would be blessed to have you in his life. The genuineness in his tone melted her heart, buoying it with optimism. She wanted to believe him, to hope beyond hope that he wasn't only saying these things out of kindness. Brandon was the sweetest man she had ever known. If only she'd realized this ten years ago. There you go again saying all the right things. You make it easy to say them. He smiled. Hanging out with you these past few days reminds me so much of college. Those were some of the best days of my life. Being able to reconnect again after all these years has been amazing. Nothing beats an old friendship. Bria cringed. There was that word again. Friendship. Did Brandon not notice the effort she had made to look her best for him? how she had curled her hair and styled it into a fancy updo, or that she had worn her prettiest dress, a cream-colored one with a lace halter top and an open back. She probably would have gotten a better reaction had she left the house in sweats. She nodded in resignation, wondering if it was too late to be anything but friends. You guys are up, Aiden called out to them from the top of the second floor. He motioned for them to join him. Come on, we've only got ten minutes before the next couple's turn. Bria swallowed the last bite of her granola bar and tossed the wrapper in a trash can near the staircase. Brandon reached for her hand to help her up the steps. Let's do this. 
She followed his lead, thankful he was going at a safe pace for her three-inch heels. He glanced over at her often to check how she was doing, an act that made her body warm. When their eyes connected, she couldn't help smiling. She likely had the goofiest grin on her face, but she didn't care. It was her wedding day, and she was marrying a wonderful man. Brandon wasn't the guy of her dreams. That one was neither realistic nor what she needed. But he had the potential of making her dreams come true. If only this marriage were real. Oh, how she prayed for it to be. When they reached the second floor, the deputy marriage commissioner, a middle-aged man with bushy brows, directed her and Brandon to face one another. Brandon reached for her other hand and squeezed both gently. He held her gaze and mouthed the words, You look amazing, before biting his lower lip. Bria's breath hitched. Maybe her effort hadn't been for naught. The look he gave her didn't say friends at all. She mouthed back a quick thanks before the officiant called for their attention. Brandon Spark and Bria Montgomery, I presume. The man read from the paper in his hands, then peered at them over the rim of his bifocals. Yes, sir, Brandon answered. That's us. Very well. Let's get this show on the road. If we finish up in five minutes, I'll have plenty of time to run to the boys' room before the next appointment. He gave them a pleading smile. Please repeat after me. Brandon, you'll go first. Brandon nodded. I, Brandon Timothy Spark, the commissioner began. Take thee, Bria Grace Montgomery, to be my wife, and before God and these witnesses, I promise to be a faithful and true husband. Brandon took a deep breath and repeated his vows. His tone was even and calm, even businesslike. Very good. The commissioner turned to Bria. It's your turn, dear. I, Bria Grace Montgomery, take thee, Brandon Timothy Spark, to be my husband, and before God and these witnesses I promise to be a faithful and true wife. Bria swallowed hard and recited her vows as well. It hit her mid-sentence when she said the words, I promise, how much she wished for this marriage to be true. She finished her vows with a trembling voice as waves of longing washed over her. The commissioner reached out his hand as he addressed Aiden. The rings, please. Bria gasped. She had completely forgotten about this part of the ceremony. They hadn't prepared rings to exchange. Brandon must have noticed the worry on her face because he squeezed her hands again. He mouthed, don't worry. She watched in surprise as Aiden stepped forward and handed over two silver rings. What? Where had those come from? The commissioner gave the smaller ring to Brandon. Repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed, and all my worldly goods I thee endow, in sickness and in health, in poverty or in wealth, till death do us part. Brandon slipped the band on Bria's finger and stated his vows. He punctuated them with a nod of his head. Please take this ring and repeat after me, the commissioner urged Bria. She picked up the band, grasping it tightly as she slipped it onto Brandon's finger. The solemnity of the situation weighed heavily on her heart with each word she repeated. There was no turning back now. All right. Now, with the authority vested in me by the state of California, I pronounce you to each other, husband and wife, the commissioner announced. He flashed Brandon a mischievous grin and told him, You may now kiss the bride. Oh, she'd forgotten about this part of the ceremony, too. Could it be she would get to kiss Brandon again? A thrill ran down her spine. This could be the perfect opportunity to show him what she thought of their friendship. If she had fooled him into thinking she had feelings for him back in college, how much easier would it be to convince him of her real feelings now? She licked her lips and waited for his next move. Uncertainty flicked across Brandon's face. He rocked back and forth on his heels as he glanced at the commissioner, then at Bria. After a moment, he gave her a small smile and stepped forward. Bria caught a whiff of his aftershave as he leaned in, bridging the distance between them. This was it. She closed her eyes and puckered her mouth in anticipation. His lips brushed the corner of hers, hovering there briefly before moving up to her cheek. They landed there with a soft smacking sound, 
leaving a trace of warmth when he pulled away. Her stomach immediately sank. So much for changing the game. It was clearer now more than ever where she stood. Despite her new title as his wife, Brandon's kiss, or non-kiss, confirmed one thing. She had long lost her chance to be anything more to him than a friend. Chapter 17 Brandon Brandon felt Bria's hand slip out of his grasp when they reached the bottom of the grand staircase. She excused herself to go to the ladies' room, leaving him standing alone in the middle of the rotunda. He turned around to find Aiden behind him, his brows raised in curiosity. His brother placed a hand on his shoulder and asked, What's going on with Bria? I think it's nerves. Brandon replied with chagrin. It was clear to him how anxious Bria was during the ceremony. She hadn't been able to complete one sentence without stumbling over her words. He guessed she must be sick to her stomach right now. It's probably good she didn't have much to eat beforehand. Aiden nodded. What about you? You seem to be taking this in stride. That's because... Brandon stopped himself when the commissioner passed by. He lowered his voice to finish his sentence. All this isn't real. It's still a big occasion. I guess I've had lots of practice being in stressful situations. Brandon forced himself to take a few deep breaths. He might have appeared relaxed on the outside, but inside he was beside himself. The only thing keeping him from breaking into a cold sweat were the Bible verses he kept repeating in his mind. Verses about love particularly one from the book of 1 John, about perfect love casting out fear. He held on to that truth, trusting that God, the absolute source of love, would sustain him. Going through the ceremony confirmed what a great responsibility marriage was, yet he realized during his vows that he'd be willing to make this lifelong commitment to Bria. He'd do just about anything for her and Seth. Unfortunately, his desires and reality were worlds apart. As much as he wished to be part of their lives, this was all temporary. To be honest, I was more sad than anxious. Sad? Why? I'll probably never get to experience the privilege of being a husband. Aiden scoffed. Never get to... Did you not hear yourself reciting those vows? You are officially a married man, you just paved the way for the rest of us brothers. Who would have guessed you'd be the first to go? Pulling his tie loose, Brandon shook his head. Under normal circumstances, I'd be the last guy to find love. Aiden narrowed his eyes. You forget? We're praying for you. Both me and Abby are. God can do miracles, just you wait. The right woman for you is out there. He sighed. Why couldn't the right woman be Bria? Ever since she had walked down the driveway that morning to his car, he had had a hard time tearing his eyes away. She looked gorgeous in her dress, her hair and makeup done perfectly, as if she were a princess going to a ball. Even with a designer suit on, he didn't possess the charm needed to hold Bria's attention. She had hardly noticed the effort he'd put in to impress her. Any reaction would have been better than the silent one he received when she got into his car. Brandon figured Aiden's presence had rendered her speechless. That's usually what happened with women who met his pop star brother. While Aiden or any of his brothers could attract the eye of any woman, he couldn't win over even one. At least, not the one who mattered the most. He glanced at his watch, then at the restroom door. Close to ten minutes had passed and Bria still hadn't come out. Maybe I should check on her? Hey, guys! A female voice called out to them from across the circular floor. A woman dressed in a sweatshirt and jeans approached, flashing a wide grin in Aiden's direction. Abby, what are you doing here? Aiden asked with obvious pleasure. Surprise! I snuck out of the studio a few minutes early to have lunch with you. When she reached him, she wrapped her arms around his neck and planted a loud kiss on his mouth. Unless you'd rather be a third wheel for the newlyweds. Hi, Brandon. She acknowledged him over her shoulder. Congrats on your big day. Hey, Abby. Thanks. He looked away to give his brother and Abby some space. 
He doubted if they needed the privacy. They seemed more than comfortable showing their affection for all the world to see. In all fairness, they were more than ready to get married. The love between them was real, strong, and evident. Oh, how he wished he could say the same for him and Bria. He checked the time again. They would need to get moving soon to avoid being stuck in traffic on their way home. He didn't want to leave Seth at Amy's longer than necessary. Just as he considered asking Abby if she could check on Bria, he saw her emerge from the restroom. Brandon rushed to her side, noticing how red and puffy her eyes were. Are you sick? She avoided his gaze. I... I might be coming down with something. Can we go now? Of course. Hold on, let me give you this. He took off his suit jacket and placed it around her shoulders. The AC's turned up really high in here. Thank you. She offered him a small, albeit grateful, smile. Let me just let Aiden and Abby know we're leaving. Bria squinted in Abby's direction. Wait, is that Abby from the radio? How do you know her? Oh, she and your brother... Her voice trailed off knowingly. What a small world. Yeah, it is. Do you know her? I only talked to her once on the air. It was when they were doing their Play It Forward campaign. Brandon cocked his head, recalling the charity fundraiser Abby had organized. I remember that. I requested a Heartland song, and Abby agreed to help me find your brother so he could do a good deed. That must have been before they started dating. His jaw dropped. A conversation came to mind of Aiden telling him about this very request. After his brother and Abby had had a tumultuous start to their relationship, it had been Bria's phone call that started a series of events that eventually brought them together. What were the chances that the person who played a significant role in Aiden's love life would be the one playing a part in his? This plot twist was too coordinated to be a coincidence. It was proof of God's hand working in all their lives. What is it? Bria asked. Why do you look surprised? I don't even know where to begin, but I'm sure Abby would want to meet you. Is that okay? She nodded slowly. I guess so. Brandon guided Bria toward Abby and introduced them to each other. This is the woman who called your show to request Aiden's song. You're kidding me! Abby grabbed Bria in a tight hug, all the while exclaiming, You're the reason Aiden and I are together! Well, other than God's intervention in our relationship, but you played a big part in it. Thank you! Bria's expression relaxed considerably, and she smiled genuinely for the first time that day. I can't take any of the credit, but I'm glad it worked out for you guys. Abby pulled back and narrowed her eyes at Bria. You certainly can take some of the credit. If you hadn't called in that day, I would never have had a reason to call up this stubborn but wonderful man again. She looked fondly at Aiden. That's true. Aiden agreed as he pulled Abby into his arms. And now you're married to Brandon, Abby remarked. Doesn't God work in amazing ways? At the mention of marriage, Bria's body stiffened. Uh, our marriage isn't... Brandon rushed in to fill the awkward silence. I told them what's going on. Bria nodded. So you understand then how complicated things are? Abby held up her hand. I get it. Life gets messy sometimes. It's a good thing God is bigger than our messes. He'll work everything out for you guys like he did for us. She nuzzled her nose against Aiden's. Isn't that right, baby? Absolutely. Brandon held back a smile. If there was anything he was absolutely sure of, it was that his brother was already far gone. Abby had him eating out of the palm of her hand, and he didn't look like he minded. Good for him. At least one of them was lucky in love. Bria and I are going to go now. You're okay getting a ride home with Abby? When Aiden didn't answer, Brandon took his dopey grin as a yes. His brother and Abby were so wrapped up in their own little world, he decided to let them be. I think they're good, he told Bria. Let's go. Bria nodded readily as she followed him to the nearest exit. They made their way to the adjacent parking garage. Once they got into Brandon's car, she leaned back against the headrest and shut her eyes. Brandon watched her with concern. 
She seemed less anxious now, but it was obvious she wanted to be alone. Why was she closing herself off? This wasn't how he imagined their marriage starting out. Not that it was a real marriage, but still. He attempted to engage her in conversation. Do you want to grab some food before we head back? There's a good sushi burrito place nearby. She shook her head. I'm not hungry. Let's just get Seth, please. All right. He replied with resignation. I guess we can eat later. Brandon started the engine and began driving. He turned the radio down to let Bria sleep. Once they were on the main road, he glanced over to check on her. That was when he noticed her left hand. Her ring finger that he had placed the wedding band on was now empty. His stomach sank. He thought for sure she'd like the band. He'd stopped by a jewelry store after picking Aiden up and picked out a matching set, even paying extra to have them engraved in a hurry. They bore identical heartbeat waves, the same image Bria had dared him to get a tattoo of during their junior year. He had accepted her dare on the account that she got one too. It had been a great bonding experience for them both. Adding the design to their rings was his way of telling her he valued their friendship, the same way he assumed she valued it. Why, then, would she have taken off the ring? Chapter 18 Bria Bria swallowed hard, forcing an oily bite of chow mein down her throat. She set her wooden chopsticks down on her plate and reached for her glass of water. Normally, she enjoyed Chinese takeout, but tonight's meal didn't appeal to her taste buds. Actually, nothing on Brandon's dining table appealed to her much. How could it when she was already stuffed full with guilt? She thought things couldn't get worse after Brandon turned down the chance to kiss her, but she had been wrong. When she went in the restroom, she had noticed the engraving on her wedding band. The image of an EKG line had stolen her breath away. In that moment, she remembered the promises she and Brandon had made the night they got their matching tattoos. The three Fs. Faith, friendship, and fun. Those were the priorities she had vowed to live by once upon a time. Sadly, though, she had traded the first two for the third. She'd given up everything for some temporary pleasure. Brandon, on the other hand, was the poster child for obedience. All these years later, he was still faithful to God and his friends. Fun wasn't his middle name, but that was okay. Bria loved how loyal and supportive he was. It saddened her to know that she didn't deserve a man like him, which is why she had removed her wedding band as soon as she could. A scarlet letter suited her much better. Oh, but she longed to play make-believe for a while— Pretend that she, Seth, and Brandon were the little family she could have had if she'd remained faithful to God so many years ago. Pretend that they normally shared their meals together, like they were doing tonight. That their home was filled with love and laughter. So much laughter. Why, even now, Brandon had Seth in stitches with his silly puns. What did the paper say to the pencil? Right on. Why did the spider go to the computer? To check his website. What makes the calendar seem so popular? Because it has a lot of dates? This last one had her son laughing so hard no sound came out of his mouth. She reached over to rub his back. Don't forget to breathe, Seth. He wiped tears from his eyes, his cheeks flushed with excitement. Mr. B's so funny, Mom. He is, isn't he? Bria had to agree. Brandon was funny and amazing, too. He had broken down Seth's walls and earned his trust in such a short amount of time. She supposed it made sense, given how similar they were. Understanding Brandon also helped her appreciate Seth more. There was a gentle strength about them that offered some much-needed peace to the world and to her. They might not be your typical guys who like to rough house or shake things up, but that was fine by her. God had made them the way they were for a purpose— corny humor and all. Shaking her head, she gave Brandon a wry smile across the table. Her stomach dropped when he grinned back. She let her gaze fall as she stuffed another bite of noodles into her mouth. No more pretending. It was time to guard her heart. Lord knows it had gotten her into enough trouble in her life, but she reminded herself she didn't need a man. She had gotten along just fine without one for this long. 
Soon, she and Seth would be on their own again. She had texted Richard a copy of their marriage license application, and he had agreed to drop the custody case, after she sent him a copy of the official document. It was a waiting game now. In a week, two tops, she and Seth would be back in their own apartment. Fortunately, she had held on to the lease, so nothing much would change. Except for Seth. She hoped her son wouldn't miss Brandon too much, but who was she kidding? He was such a sensitive soul. He even teared up during puppy food commercials. And here she was, giving him another reason to cry. Guilt crashed down on her heart, increasing her burden even more. She'd never be able to give Seth a father like he deserved. Still, she thanked the Lord for giving her son a glimpse of what a good father looked like, and for giving her the chance to experience marriage to a godly man. As if Brandon could read her mind, he stood up and offered to refill her glass. She handed it to him with a quick word of thanks. As he headed to the kitchen, she observed how he moved with ease and confidence in his home. Even though he was only wearing a t-shirt and shorts, and not his fancy suit from two days ago, he looked fantastic. His legs were surprisingly toned and tanned, and she had an inkling to know what it would be like to cuddle in bed together. Her legs intertwined with his. Heat rushed up to her face at the thought that she was checking Brandon out, and in front of her son, too. She glanced over at Seth and found him eyeing her with a curious smile. Did you have fun on your date with Mr. B? An innocent twinkle lit up his baby blues. You guys were really dressed up that day. Uh, yeah, we were. Realizing what she had admitted to, Bria backtracked. It wasn't a date, Seth. We just met up with his brother and his brother's girlfriend. That was the truth. Getting to meet Aiden and Abby had been a bonus not to mention the part where she had learned how she played a role in their relationship. She was still blown away that God had used her in that way. Sure, Mom. Bria raised a brow. Did Seth just roll his eyes at her? She narrowed her own and repeated herself. Mr. B and I are not dating. He shrugged and stuffed the last bite of an egg roll into his mouth. When he had finished chewing it, he declared, But if you guys were, it'd be okay with me. I like it here. It's so cool that we get to live with Mr. B. Um, about that, Seth. She reached for his hand and patted it. This is only temporary. I found out we don't have to move after all. We'll be able to go back to our place in a week or two. His face immediately fell. Oh. Brandon returned with her glass and sat back down. He glanced at her and then at Seth and asked, What did I miss? Nothing much, Bria replied as casually as possible. I just let Seth know we'll be going back to our apartment soon. Brandon placed a hand on Seth's shoulder. I know, I'm disappointed too, but we'll have fun in the meantime. He turned to Bria and asked, Would it be okay if Seth stayed with me for the rest of the week while you're at work? Are you sure? Bria's heart warmed at his offer. Having Seth occupied would make working a lot easier. What about your writing? I'm still waiting on my editor, and I can do most of my marketing at night. He grinned at Seth. What do you say, buddy? Yeah! Seth bounced up and down in his chair, too excited to sit still. It's going to be the best week ever! Bria felt her shoulders relax, almost as if on cue when Seth cheered. Thank you, Brandon. This is so generous of you. She smiled so wide she felt like a swoony teenager on her first date. That was until he responded. No worries. I'd do anything for a good friend. He shifted his attention abruptly to his plate of food and shoved a piece of orange chicken into his mouth. He swallowed just as quickly and turned to Seth. Would you like to play Scrabble after dinner? Seth's eyes grew round like saucers. That's my favorite game! Mom never plays it with me because I always beat her. Bria scoffed, but she was secretly glad for the change in conversation. Always is an exaggeration. Sometimes is more like it. Sometimes all the time, Seth shot back playfully. Brandon chuckled. He got you there, Bria. She pretended to pout. Hey, whose side are you on? His? I mean yours. After a second, he grinned. Both. 
Definitely both. Despite her earlier disappointment, Bria had to laugh. This was the most fun she had had in a long time. Maybe it wasn't such a bad idea to let herself enjoy this make-believe life. For once, she longed to live in the moment instead of being weighed down by the past. So she decided to do just that and not let her regrets or anything else get in the way. Not even the fact that her happiness would eventually have to come to an end. Chapter 19 Brandon Brandon aimed the remote at the TV screen and turned it off. He glanced to his right and found both Seth and Bria sound asleep on the couch, snuggling under a thin blanket. It was late enough in the evening that the July heat had died down. A light breeze now blew in through the screen door leading to the backyard. They had just finished watching a movie together, a comedy featuring a pack of mischievous golden retrievers. Or he had finished watching it. Seth had fallen asleep midway through, and Bria had closed her eyes about ten minutes before the credits rolled. He rested his arm along the top of the couch as he took in the beautiful sight beside him. This past week of living with Bria and Seth had shown him a glimpse of what family life could be like. He doubted he'd ever experience the wonder himself, but he was thankful for the blessing of being able to play make-believe for a while. He'd had, in Seth's words, the best week ever, pretending to be a husband and father. He and Seth had spent hours together at the library while Bria worked. They'd gone to Colin's ice cream shop nearly every day and burned off the calories by playing miniature golf and bowling. It'd been such a pleasant surprise to find out they shared these common interests. He'd always felt like the oddball among his brothers for not excelling at contact sports, being able to do these activities with Seth was a bit like reliving his childhood, but in a much safer way. Bria stirred and opened her eyes. Their gazes locked over Seth's blonde head. She smiled sleepily at him and asked, Is the movie over? Yep, you missed the best part. The dogs flew off to a remote island and started their own hotel for cats. He laughed softly when her brows shot up. This was the Bria he remembered from college the spunky, cheerful one who rolled her eyes at his nerdy jokes. She had gradually reappeared over the past few days, much to his delight. He was more than happy to have his old friend back. I see doubt in your face. Are you saying you don't believe me? Nope, not one bit. There wasn't one dog in the movie who liked cats, and now you're telling me they decided to start a business for them? That seems a little out of character. I'm not a writer, but I'm sure that's a big no-no for a story. Okay, you're right, he admitted. That didn't happen. It'd be as unlikely as having two characters who you expected to fall in love end up with different people. People would not be happy with that. An ending has to make sense. Exactly. Now, if you had told me they opened a doggy resort or even a doggy monastery, I'd have bought it. She suddenly burst out in laughter and quickly clapped a hand over her mouth. Listen to us, Brandon. Did you ever think back in college that we'd be having a conversation like this one day? What happened to us? Uh, life happened. Old age? He joked as he shrugged his shoulders. I don't mind, though. I kind of like it. She cocked her head. You like staying home on a Saturday night to watch a kitty movie? There's no part of you that misses the good old college days. Not really. Back then, I didn't know myself very well, or what I wanted out of life. Now, I do. If he were braver, he'd admit he was referring to her and Seth. But alas, he was a writer used to hiding behind his computer screen. What about you? It sounds like you miss it. Twisting her mouth to the side, she thought for a moment. I do. I miss the excitement of being able to meet new people and try new things. I miss the freedom we had to stay up late and be spontaneous. I miss not having to think about consequences. She took a deep breath. That's not reality, though. We have all these responsibilities now and things to worry about. It feels like there's one thing after another to deal with, and so little of it is fun. But life should be more than that. Life is about living, not just surviving. He nodded, not quite knowing what to say. 
It seemed Bria wasn't looking for answers, though, just a listening ear. She looked over at his hand on the back of the couch and tapped the band on his fourth finger. Brandon hadn't seen her ring since the ceremony, but he had chosen to wear his on his right hand. She met his gaze, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. The rings you got are a good reminder to live life to the fullest. They're beautiful. Thank you for getting them. Of course. I was thankful the jeweler could do the engravings on such short notice. I can't believe they're an exact replica of our tattoos. At least I think they are, based on what I can see of them. She gave him a wry smile. You know, it would have been nice to have gotten our tattoos in a more visible place. The only time I see mine is in the bathroom mirror, and even then it's hard to see. That was kind of the point. I remember you suggested getting them on our wrists, but I was sure my whole family would have freaked out if they knew I had gotten a tattoo. It's a bit out of character for me, as you probably know. He added with a grin. You're lucky I didn't convince you to get a piercing, too. Those are much harder to hide. Yeah, well, I had to draw the line somewhere. I could only endure so much pain. And his ego could only take so much beating. It had been embarrassing enough being the only one close to tears in the tattoo parlor. Bria winced. I'm sorry about that part. But hey, wasn't it worth it? Uh, yes? He answered in a not-so-convincing tone. If I ever come up with a story where a character gets a tattoo, it'll be the easiest scene for me to write. You can thank me, then. Maybe one day. He took a deep breath before asking. Why don't you wear the ring? That way you can see the tattoo whenever you want to. She nodded in Seth's direction. This one's really observant. I'm sure he'd notice the matching rings and start asking questions. Anyhow, I was planning on giving it back to you. She paused. After this gig is up. You don't have to. I got it for you. It's yours to keep. That's sweet of you, Brandon, but it wouldn't be right. You should keep it. Save it for the woman who will be lucky enough to really marry you one day. He shook his head. I'm not getting married. What? Why not? It's not in the cards for me. I'm okay with it, though. He added quickly. I've got my family, my parents, and brothers. I have the Lord. I'm good. He frowned, feeling like he had truly sealed his fate by saying the words out loud. Well, so be it. If he couldn't have Bria, he didn't want anyone else. But you'd make a wonderful father. You're so good with Seth. He's been so happy since you started spending time with him. You'd make a great husband, too. I should know. She punctuated her statement with an affectionate smile. He swallowed hard. If only she realized the impact of her words. Did she really mean what she said? There was an unfamiliar tenderness in her eyes. Before he could reply, however, she was on her feet. I'm beat, she yawned. I better get Seth to bed and turn in too. We have church tomorrow. He rose as well. Do you want me to carry him? Sure, if you don't mind. I can barely lift him when he's sleeping. Brandon nodded. The ice cream I've been feeding him probably doesn't help. He slipped one arm under Seth's head and the other under his knees and picked him up. Oh, I can definitely feel the ice cream, he joked as he carried the boy down the hall with Bria behind him. With a gentle touch, he set Seth down on the futon in the study. Brandon adjusted the blanket and pulled it up to the sleeping boy's chin. He whispered, good night, before turning to leave. Unbeknownst to Brandon, Bria was standing right behind him. When he spun around, he bumped into her shoulder, knocking her off balance. She fell backward until he caught her around the waist and pulled her close. Their gazes connected, and it was almost like a scene from a movie. Brandon could feel her heart beating, or maybe it was his own. He couldn't tell anymore. All he knew was that Bria was in his arms. She was so close he could see flecks of gold in her amber eyes. She was soft and warm against him, the small curves of her body melding effortlessly into his. He wondered how it would feel to hold her all night like this, how it would feel to kiss her again. He didn't need to wonder much longer. The next thing he knew, her mouth was on his. Chapter 20 Bria 
Bria cupped Brandon's face with her hands and drew him close. As soon as her lips touched his, Brandon responded. He claimed her mouth, tentatively at first, then with a gentle pressure as he deepened the kiss. Electricity zipped through her body, warming her straight to the core. She lost herself in their closeness, completely caught up in the moment, too caught up to think about the consequences or even breathe. All the longing stored up in her heart overflowed, pushing her to take a chance, to act on impulse, or maybe it was intuition. Brandon was so familiar and trustworthy, it was like her heart recognized their potential together before her mind did. And maybe she was a decade too late, but she didn't care. He was here, she was here, and the moment was perfect. Or it was until Brandon pulled away. Bria. His voice faltered. We shouldn't be doing this. She was mortified. How could she have read the situation so wrong? Here she was, throwing herself at Brandon only for him to reject her. Bitterness replaced the sweetness their kiss had left in her mouth. Funny how the tables had turned. She deserved it, though. Brandon had every right to reject her after she had rejected him. But having him dismiss her like this hurt even more than she imagined. A soft voice piped up, adding to her mortification. Mom? She turned to find Seth sitting up in bed. How much had he seen? Hey, buddy, what are you doing up? You should be sleeping. I want some water. Can you get me some? Sure, I'll be right back. Brandon placed a hand on her arm. Here, let me. No, I've got this, she insisted as she passed him on her way to the hall. The sadness in his eyes made her hesitate, but she didn't stop. She couldn't. Her body had gone into defensive mode. Anger and hurt swirled inside her, making her face flush. Alone in the kitchen, Bria grabbed a mug from one of the cabinets and filled it at the water dispenser on the refrigerator door. She took a long gulp, letting the cold liquid do its magic. Her body quickly cooled down. She refilled the mug, then leaned against the counter as the adrenaline faded from her body. Without Brandon's blue eyes looking into her soul, she could finally think straight. What had she done? What in the world had compelled her to kiss him? They had just reestablished their friendship, and now she had gone and messed it up. Her throat constricted. That was one thing she was good at, making messes. But cleaning them up was a whole other matter. She heard footsteps and saw Brandon approach, his pace slow and unsure. Caution showed on his face, creating a crease between his brows. I don't think you need to bring the water anymore, he began. Seth fell back to sleep. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know. She forced herself to answer calmly. She cradled the mug to her chest with both hands, as if holding it there would protect her. Brandon opened and closed his mouth a few times before asking, Do you want to talk? Huh? How long could she play dumb? About what? You know, about what just happened, with you and me? She laughed bitterly, knowing she couldn't avoid the issue much longer. There's really not much to talk about. I kissed you, you rejected me. It's pretty clear what went on. I, I didn't reject you, Bria. You told me to stop. If that's not a rejection, I don't know what is. I just didn't think it was a good idea. He frowned as he struggled to get his words out. Our situation, it's complicated. I didn't want to make it even more. It doesn't matter anyway, she cut in. Nothing he said would nullify the fact that he had hurt her. So she would pretend she didn't care. The kiss didn't mean anything. It didn't? I got caught up in our role-playing, Bria touted, trying to sound nonchalant. You know, the whole being married thing. We've been around each other so much I started thinking this, us, was real. It's just pretend, though, like that kiss was. He took a tentative step forward. Bria, I know I don't have much experience with kissing, but that didn't seem like nothing. That kiss felt real. She scoffed. You're right. You don't have enough experience to tell if it was real or not. Trust me when I say it wasn't. The words fell out of her mouth almost effortlessly, but the hurt on Brandon's face was enough to make her want to swallow them back. 
How could she be so mean? Her friend had been nothing but kind to her, and here she was, taking a knife to his heart. She didn't deserve his friendship. I think it's time Seth and I moved back to our place. We've inconvenienced you long enough. We'll leave first thing tomorrow. She set the mug down in the sink, prepared to start packing. Bria, you don't need to do that. We haven't gotten the marriage certificate yet. What if Richard shows up at your apartment and sees you and Seth there? He'll know this was all a scam. Brandon was right. So right. This whole marriage was a scam. How could she have believed any of it was real? She had messed up too much in her life to get her own happy ending. I'll tell him I'm in the process of moving. I'll make something up. Don't worry. It's not your problem to deal with. But you're my friend. I care about you. And Seth, too. It matters to me what happens to you both. She shook her head. She hated hearing the pity in his voice. Seeing it on his face stung even more. We're not your family, Brandon. You can stop caring. We'll be fine as we've always been. Seth and I are used to being on our own. A soft whimper sounded from the hallway, interrupting her words. Bria's heart sank when she spotted a small figure hiding behind Brandon. Seth? Brandon spun around and dropped to his knees before the trembling boy. Hey, buddy, when did you get here? Bria didn't know how long Seth had been listening, but from his sad look, she imagined he'd heard enough. I thought you fell asleep. Do you still want some water? Seth shook his head furiously. Why are you doing this? Why, Mom? His tear-streaked face begged for answers. Mr. B loves us. Why can't he be our friend anymore? She rushed over to her son's side. Seth, sweetie, I didn't mean Mr. B can't be our friend. He still is. It's just, things are complicated. This is grown-up stuff, which doesn't always make sense to kids. She'd be the first to admit matters of the heart didn't make much sense to her, either. Despite the awkwardness of the situation, she turned to Brandon for support. He always seemed to know the right things to say, especially to Seth. He nodded in response to her pleading eyes, then turned to Seth. Hey, buddy, remember what we talked about before? How God brings people into our lives at different times and for different reasons? Seth sniffled as he listened. That's how it is for us. God gave us the chance to meet and spend time together. We made a lot of memories that we can hold on to for the rest of our lives. You and your mom had fun staying at my place for a while, but... He hesitated. It's time for you to go back to your home. I... I have a lot of writing I need to do, so it won't work for you to stay here anymore. Seth's bottom lip trembled. You... you don't want me either? Either? What do you mean? Like my dad. He never comes to see me, but... but I thought you were different. Brandon sucked in a breath, sounding as if he had been punched. Oh, Seth, that's not true. You and I, we have a bond no one can break. I would be the luckiest guy in the world if you were my son. I'm so blessed to have you as my friend. We will always be friends. Anytime you want to go to the library or get ice cream, you just tell your mom and I'll be there. I promise. Seth nodded. He ran straight into Brandon's arms and hugged him tight. Bria watched their exchange with a heavy lump in her throat. It wasn't fair. Her son shouldn't have to suffer for her mistakes. Guilt weighed on her all the more, forcing her to look away. When she turned, however, she failed to see Seth whisper into Brandon's ear with a mischievous grin lighting up his face. Chapter 21 Brandon Brandon released a long sigh and took another sip of his soda. His eyes glazed over as he stared at the action scene playing on the TV screen. He was over at Colin and Darren's, trying to pass the time anywhere else besides his own place. His own home was quiet. Too quiet, since Bria and Seth moved out a week ago. He hadn't heard from them, and didn't know if he would any time soon. Even though Bria had promised to schedule some time for him to visit Seth, Brandon understood he didn't hold any rights to the boy. If he got to see him again, it would only be by God's grace. 
He had messed things up so badly with Bria that he had no idea how to repair their relationship. All he could do was pray she'd still want to be friends. A pair of fingers appeared before his face, making a snapping sound. Brandon blinked until Colin's large hand came into focus. Huh? Uh, what is it? Bro, are you even watching the movie? That whole building just blew up and you didn't even flinch. Still thinking about Bria, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Brandon admitted reluctantly. Seth, too. I really miss them. I hate how quiet it is at my place now. It's just not the same without them. Colin chuckled. And to think you moved out of here because you hated the noise. Brandon eyed his younger brother, who was sitting beside him on the couch between a laundry basket and a stack of video games. The entire living room, along with the rest of the condo, save for Darren's room, was just as cluttered. The visual mess was a tangible reminder of the other reason why Brandon had moved out. It wasn't just the noise, Colin. He stated as gently as possible. It was also... He looked around the room. The lack of space. I know, I know. I'm going to clean up. Someday, he added with chagrin. But what are you going to do about Bria? You can't just let her walk away like that. Brandon frowned. That was, in fact, what he had done. But it wasn't like he could force her and Seth to stay especially not after he had embarrassed her by turning down her kiss. He gulped. What had he been thinking? He had been so close to having his own happily ever after, yet he'd gone and sabotaged it. I don't know. I tried to tell her how I feel, but the words wouldn't come out. Without a pen and paper or a keyboard, I can't think, much less speak. Colin gave him a sympathetic look. That's your problem. You're too much in your head. Just come out and tell her how you feel. You know, name your feelings. Fear, sadness, disappointment, anger. Any of those would work. Women respond to emotion. Brandon blew out a long breath. Why was it he could write about these things till he turned blue in the face, but he couldn't come out and say them? He wished he could be as uninhibited and carefree as Colin. No one ever had to wonder what was on his brother's mind. He turned to Colin and asked, How do you do it? Do what? Speak your mind and tell others how you feel. Don't you worry what they'll think of you? The corners of Colin's mouth curved up behind his soda can. He lowered his drink and replied, Of course I do, especially if it's someone whose opinion matters. But I'd rather have people like me for who I am. I can't pretend to be someone I'm not. And you can't go through life as a shadow. You have to own who you are. You're quiet, thoughtful, and sensitive, because God made you that way. Brandon smiled wryly. You forgot shy and socially awkward. I have nothing on the rest of you guys. What are you talking about? Darren said you made a woman faint at your last book reading. Colin, she was in her 60s. No woman our age would look at me twice. Says the guy who got kissed by a woman our age and then rejected her. He raised a brow. That was not a good move, bro. I don't know what you were thinking. When a woman kisses you, you kiss her back. I did, but then I got scared. You know what happened the first time Bria kissed me? She left the next day. He cringed as the words left his mouth. And that's exactly what happened this time. What is it about me and the opposite sex? Why can't I get along with them in real life? Colin narrowed his eyes. You need to have faith in yourself. You're not the same guy who sat at home alone on prom night. You're a famous author. I'm not famous, Brandon interjected. At least not enough to be a household name. Colin shot him a disapproving look. As I was saying... You're a famous author with a large following of female fans. These fans love your work and can't wait to buy every book you write. You're financially stable. You own your own place. Heck, you even got married before the rest of us. He held up his hand when Brandon tried to cut in. You proposed, she accepted, so you technically are married. Only on paper. 
That's still one piece of paper the rest of us don't have. His expression turned serious. Offering to marry Bria and having her and her son stay with you? That's a huge deal. It goes to show how big your heart is. You inspire me. Not many people would have had the guts to do what you did. Brandon shook his head, refusing to accept Colin's compliments. You can call it guts. I call it being impulsive. Colin scoffed. You are as steady as they come, Bran. I don't recall you deciding to open an ice cream shop after you watched a documentary about ice cream on TV. I've got exclusive dibs on the word impulsive. You've got a point there. Brandon couldn't help but chuckle. Colin did have many strengths, but he could also drive their family crazy with his spontaneous business ventures. But the things you do are cool. You have to admit that. And you're a cooler person than you make yourself out to be. So be that guy and go get Bria back. You want her back, don't you? Of course. She's the only woman I've ever wanted. Then tell her. Go over to her place tonight and let her know. Go over? Can I send her a text? Colin shook his head. Cool Brandon doesn't text. Cool Brandon does things in person. That way, Bria won't be able to resist your charm and good looks when you're face-to-face. -face. Brandon really laughed now. Right. Why else would she have kissed you? Why indeed, Brandon wondered. Maybe it was what Bria had said, that their role-playing as husband and wife had led her to believe they really were married. he had almost believed it himself. Along with Seth, their little family had seemed so real and so wonderful. He loved praying with them around the dinner table, with Bria's hand in his left and Seth's in his right. He loved it when they laughed together, especially when it was at one of his corny jokes. Most of all, he loved the comfortable silences that fell upon them when they were in the same room. Him and Seth buried in their books while Bria read a magazine. Despite their separate activities, all he had to do to connect with one of them was lift his head and smile. The smiles he received in return were immediate and genuine. Brandon had never felt more content than in those moments. Content with himself and confident in his ability to love and be loved. He gasped. While he'd been beating himself up for not having his brother's strength, he had completely overlooked his own. His strength was his heart. The source of his emotions that sometimes overwhelmed him but also pumped life into his relationships. When he loved someone, he was all in. There was no going back. Every beat of his heart told him he loved Bria and Seth, loved them as if they were his own, and he didn't want to be apart from them for another minute. Brandon scrambled to his feet, digging his toes into the carpet as he rushed by Colin to the front door. Good chatting with you. He called over his shoulder. Sorry I can't stay. There's someone I need to go see. Actually, two someones. The sound of Colin's laughter followed him out the door and down the sidewalk to his parked car. He hopped inside and started the engine, eager to see his wife and son. Even if they were only his family on paper, he prayed they would soon be his in their hearts. Chapter 22 Bria Bria threw one arm over her eyes as she lay down on the lumpy couch in her living room. A hard metal coil dug into her back, reminding her of how much she hated her current situation. It wasn't just the old couch she had to sleep on every night so Seth could have his own room, or the fact that she'd have to beg her parents for financial help once Richard's child support checks stopped. It was the thought that she'd lost the one person in her life who knew her the best. Brandon. The thought of him and the way he flashed a shy smile her way made her heart hurt. She thought for sure he liked her, but she'd been wrong. So wrong. He had only shown her kindness because he pitied her and Seth. She had too much baggage for him to accept. Hot tears welled up in her eyes, leaving a wet spot on her forearm. She wanted to cry, needed to cry, but it was so hard to let her guard down. Oh, how she longed to have someone hold her. It was hard being strong all the time, especially for Seth's sake. But she needed to be. Now more than ever. 
They were on their own again, this time for good. Brandon's words came back to her. He'd said God was a father to the fatherless. But what about her? There were a handful of verses in the Bible about the Lord caring for widows. But what about a single mom who had never had a husband? Did she qualify for God's love and mercy? It was hard to imagine herself being worthy of his care when she had disobeyed him. It was times like these that she wished she could have a face-to-face -face conversation with God. She just needed five minutes of his time to ask a few questions and receive assurance that she was loved and on the right track. As if on cue, her cell phone sounded. She scooped it up off the floor and answered it before the ringing woke up Seth in the next room. Hello? Bria, how are you? I had an urge to call you just now. My sixth sense was working overtime. Bria smiled to hear Amy's voice on the line. Her friend often joked that she had another sense at work to replace her lost vision. Maybe this time it was more than that. It's so good to hear from you. I really need a friend right now. What happened? Aren't you at Mr. Sparks' place? No, Seth and I left last week. I messed up, Amy. She proceeded to fill in her friend on that eventful last evening together. Just when I thought Brandon and I were finally on the same page with our relationship, the Sparks died. They fizzled out before they even started. It was so embarrassing. And I was so mean to him. I wouldn't blame him if he never talked to me again. Hmm. There was a lengthy pause before Amy spoke again. I think you're reading the situation all wrong. I don't know how else to read it. He rejected me, plain and simple. He said kissing you wasn't a good idea, but that doesn't mean the kiss itself wasn't a good thing. Bria furrowed her brows as she sat up. So he wanted to kiss me, but he didn't want to kiss me? That makes no sense. It makes total sense, girl. You obviously don't read enough romance. She chuckled. I obviously don't. I didn't even finish that one book of Brandon's that you lent me. I got stuck in the middle where the girl kept going back and forth about whether she and the guy would work out. They had just kissed and had so much chemistry, but there were all these other issues in the picture. Oh! Bria's jaw dropped. It was as if a big neon sign, like the one in her salon's front window, was flashing before her eyes. I think I understand what you're saying now. Why don't you enlighten me? The humor in Amy's tone was evident. Brandon stopped our amazing kiss because he knew it would make things a lot more complicated. Ooh, so the kiss was amazing, was it? Amy squealed. How amazing was it? Bria placed a hand to her cheek, surprised at how warm it was. Just the thought of Brandon's lips on hers had that effect on her. It was like how you imagine a kiss should be with all the anticipation built up from waiting and the excitement of it actually happening rolled up into one. Wow. Wow was right. Bria felt like she was finally understanding the bigger picture. That maybe, just maybe, Brandon did feel the same way about her that she felt about him. He was only being cautious because he was Brandon, after all. Between the two of them, he'd always been the calm and steady one. She hadn't appreciated those traits of his when they were younger, but she now saw them as signs of maturity. Brandon was a good man, possibly the best she'd ever known. She could only pray that he was kind enough to overlook her rash actions and give her another chance. I gotta go, Amy. Thanks for the chat. Sure thing, but don't thank me. Thank God. He wouldn't let me sleep until I called you. I will. I definitely will. Now go to bed. Bria added with a laugh before she hung up. Bria shook her head in awe of the Lord's timing. She took a deep breath and closed her eyes, the way she used to do as a child, with innocence and faith. She murmured the words she had been holding on to for so long. I'm sorry, God, for straying. I'm sorry I took your grace for granted. I know you're bigger than my problems, so much bigger. Even though my own family wants nothing to do with me or Seth, you've given us friends, both new and old, who love us. I thank you for Amy. I thank you for Brandon. Please, please help me fix things with him. 
With a new sense of determination, she sat up straight and opened her eyes. She placed a hand over her stomach to calm the flurry of butterflies there. Everything in her wanted to call up Brandon to fix things, but she also desperately wanted to see him. With Seth in bed, however, leaving the apartment wasn't an option. She debated making a video call but decided against it when she remembered she was wearing an old tank top and frayed pair of shorts. A phone call would have to do. She dialed Brandon's number and held her breath. The phone rang and rang until his voicemail picked up. This is Brandon Spark. I'm either reading or writing, so please leave me a message and I'll return your call when I emerge from my cave. Thanks. Bria cleared her throat, preparing to leave a much-needed apology. Hi, Brandon, this is Bria. I'm calling to apologize. I really made a mess of things the last time we talked. I'm sorry. Seth misses you a lot, and so do I. It'd be great to see you again. Call me, please. She hung up and fell back onto the couch. The same metal spring poked her in the back, but it didn't bother her as much. A peace settled over her heart. This change in perspective gave her the hope she needed that not all was lost. She didn't care so much about material things, but the relationships in her life? They were irreplaceable, especially that of an old friend. Tears pricked her eyes again, this time from the gratitude overflowing in her heart. She checked the time on her phone, 11.30. The late hour plus the exhaustion from a long day on her feet began to weigh on her. Her body relaxed for the first time in a week, and her heavy eyelids began to close. With the TV on mute and the lamp on the side table still lit, she drifted off to sleep. Minutes later, a knocking on the apartment door startled her awake. Bria rubbed her eyes and sat up. The knocking grew louder and more insistent with each passing second, to the point where she feared it would wake Seth, not to mention their neighbors. She scrambled to her feet and rushed to the door. She peeked through the peephole and felt her heart sink. With the chain lock still in place, she opened the door. Richard? She eyed the man leaning against her doorframe. Even in the dim light of the hallway, she saw his eyes were bloodshot. The stench of alcohol filled the two-inch gap between them. What are you doing here? Richard leaned forward, disdain pulling his lips into a tight line. I should ask you the same thing. Why aren't you living with your husband? Or was your talk about getting married all a lie? Because if it was, you know what you owe me. I don't owe you anything. Anger flooded Bria's body, causing her words to rush out like water from a broken dam. How dare Richard come over to accuse and threaten her? I'm not afraid of you, Richard. I have God on my side. You can do all the shady things you want, but you're not getting me or my son. She pushed the door to close it, but not before Richard wedged his foot in the doorway. He snickered. Open the door, Bria. I want what's mine. You can take the easy way out or we can get the authorities involved. We both know how many friends I've got on the force. Your so-called friends have nothing on my god, she retorted with a boldness that surprised even her. She had to admit, though, with fifty pounds on her, much of it muscle, Richard was at a greater advantage in this situation. One kick and he'd have the door down in no time flat. What would she do then? Once more, she urged him to leave, adding in a threat of her own. You should go, Richard, while you have the chance. I have friends, too, and you don't want to be here when they arrive. He scoffed. Yeah, right. Let em. I can take them on single-handedly. I'm serious, Richard. Leave us alone. Y you heard her. A male voice called out from down the hall. It grew louder as the man neared Bria's apartment. Bria asked you to leave. Bria sucked in a breath. Brandon. Her heart pounded wildly in her chest as relief, then fear, washed over her. She had been so concerned for her and Seth's safety before, but now she feared the most for the man she loved. Chapter 23 Brandon Brandon clenched his hands into tight fists as he neared Bria's door. He had shown up to her apartment as cool Brandon. Now he was trying his best to be brave and bold Brandon. 
Even still, a cold sweat broke out on his forehead, and the hair on the back of his neck stood up. Every one of his senses told him, warned him, of the impending danger of this situation. The charismatic co-ed he remembered from college was taller and hunkier than before, with an overinflated ego to match. Brandon dreaded confronting Richard, but he feared the consequences if he didn't. Richard had no business harassing Bria like this. She was his wife, and Brandon would do anything to protect her, even at the risk of his own safety. Besides, he knew God had his back. He wasn't alone in this confrontation. Richard looked over at him with a sly smile. So, the boyfriend finally decided to show up. He narrowed his eyes at Brandon. What was your name again? Brian? Brad? Brandon raised his chin and crossed his arms in a stance he often saw Darren take. With more confidence than he had ever known, he stated, It's Brandon, and I'm not Bria's boyfriend. I'm her husband. As her husband, I'm asking you to leave before you regret your decision to come here tonight. Regret my decision. Richard scoffed under his breath. Despite his expensive suit, he was a mess. His tie hung loosely around his neck, and a trail of dark splotches stained the front of his dress shirt. When he turned to face Brandon, his movements were as unsteady as his face was red. He didn't look like he'd be able to stay upright much longer. Waving a stubby finger in Brandon's direction, he touted, Do you not know who I am? I'm going to be the next mayor of Newark. You better watch your mouth. As Richard stepped away from the door, Brandon craned his neck to see inside the apartment. He gave a tight-lipped smile to Bria, who was waving frantically to him, gesturing for him to leave. He mouthed, It's okay to her, before turning his attention back to the man stumbling toward him. Take it easy, Richard. Maybe you should sit down. Richard reached out for Brandon's shoulder to steady himself. There's no time to sit. I need to win the election before they find out. He rambled on, murmuring incoherent words to himself. Brandon ducked his head as the acrid smell of Richard's breath burned his eyes. His stomach turned, filling his mouth with a bitter taste. Uh-oh. It seemed Richard wasn't the only one at risk of keeling over. Brandon knew he'd have to do something fast for both their sakes. Thankfully, the buzzing of his phone in his back pocket confirmed help had arrived. Heavy footsteps soon sounded on the staircase leading up to the second floor. Guys, Brandon called over his shoulder. Over here. Two men immediately came running up the hall. Relief flooded Brandon as Colin and Darren each grabbed one of Richard's arms and lowered him to the ground. Brandon took a deep, cleansing breath, then ran for Bria's door. Brandon! Bria burst through the door and into his arms. Are you okay? I'm fine. He held her warm body against his, savoring the feel of her soft hair against his cheek. It was so good to not only see Bria again, but hold her. Are you okay? Where's Seth? She pulled back, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. He's fine. He's sleeping inside. And you? Did Richard hurt you? No, he was outside the whole time. She glanced over at Brandon's brothers, who were eyeing them with knowing looks. How did you guys know I needed help? Brandon gave her a sheepish smile. I was downstairs in my car when I saw Richard pull up. I followed him and texted my brothers to meet me here as soon as they could. He motioned for his brothers to come over. You already met Darren at the bookstore. This is Colin. Thank you both so much for your help. Bria shook both their hands. I don't know what happened to Richard. I've seen him drunk before, but never like this. I'm guessing he had a bad night, Colin quipped. A nap should help fix things. I know it always does for me. Darren nodded toward Richard, who was passed out on the cement floor. I'll call one of my buddies on the force and have him come deal with this. I'll make sure he's gone by the time your son wakes up. Brandon breathed easy for the first time since he had arrived. He noticed Bria shivering as a cool breeze blew past them from an open window down the hall. Why don't you go inside? We'll stay here and keep an eye on Richard. A line appeared between Bria's brows. She answered with a hesitant, okay, before leaving his side. 
Brandon felt a quick jab in his ribs and turned to see Colin mouthing the word, go, as he pointed to Bria's back. As if fearing Brandon wouldn't understand his suggestion, Colin pushed him in the direction of Bria's apartment. Brandon faltered in his next steps and had to grab onto the doorframe to keep from crashing into Bria. She spun around with a questioning look on her face. Do you want to come inside? She asked all three men. The least I can do is offer you all something to drink. Brandon will. Colin answered with a bright smile. Darren and I'll stand guard here, you know, just in case. Yeah, we'll wait here for my friend to show up. Darren chimed in. Thank you for the offer, though. Bria's face brightened considerably at their answers. She held the door open for Brandon as he followed her inside the apartment, then closed it behind him. Have a seat. Would you like a soda? Sure. Brandon answered hopefully as he sat down on the sofa. She walked to the kitchen and returned with his drink. She handed the can to him and sat beside him. Before he could say a word of thanks, she was already talking a mile a minute. I can't believe how crazy that was. I thought for sure Richard was going to hurt you. Why in the world did you try to confront him like that? The panic in her voice made him feel guilty. He honestly hadn't meant to worry Bria. Maybe it hadn't been the smartest move to make, but he didn't regret it. I wanted you and Seth to be safe. I thought if I diverted the attention away from you, he'd leave you guys alone. I just wanted you to be safe. He repeated with conviction. You're amazing, Brandon. Thank you. I don't know what would have happened if you and your brothers hadn't come. You guys were an answered prayer. She paused, as if pondering her next words. What made you come over, though? Was it the voicemail I left you earlier? Voicemail? I didn't get a chance to check my messages yet. What did you call for? She bit her lower lip before replying. To apologize. I wanted to say sorry for the mean things I said last week, and also to let you know how much Seth has missed you. How much I've missed you. The uncertain way she spoke the last sentence made his heart ache. Did she not know how much he cared for her? I've missed you guys too. So, so much. You have? Oh, yeah. He took a deep breath. This was it. Earlier, he had been sitting in his car trying to sort through his feelings like Colin had suggested. Now was his chance to fulfill his purpose for coming over tonight. He was ready to share his heart with Bria. It was now or never. I want to apologize, too. I should have been more honest with you about how I feel. It would have caused a lot less confusion if I had just come out and told you what I was thinking. You know, why I stopped our kiss. Bria turned to him with a bright smile. It's not too late to tell me now. Brandon inhaled as their bare knees bumped below the hemlines of their shorts. Warmth zinged through his body, filling him with joy. Being this close to Bria felt wonderful and so natural. The tenderness in her eyes emboldened him to speak. Ever since we lost touch, I always wondered if I'd see you again. Bumping into you at the bookstore was a dream come true. Then to have the chance to marry you, even though it was on paper only, that was the happiest day of my life. I loved spending time with you and Seth and pretending we were our own little family. Everything was going so well up until the kiss. Kissing you, it scared me. I didn't want to ruin what we had. And I didn't know if you truly felt the same way about me or if you'd gotten caught up in the moment. I just didn't want what we had to end. He swallowed hard, allowing his words to hang in the heavy silence as he waited for her reply. Bria nodded. I get what you're saying. What we had, even for the short amount of time that we had it, felt too good to be true. I never thought I'd let myself get close to a man again. Her lips trembled as she spoke. I didn't think I deserved a happy ending after the mess I had made of my life. But Bria, what happened is all in the past. God's forgiven you already. You don't need to beat yourself up over it. I know, she replied simply. But he's God. It's easier for him to forgive because he's all-loving. From my experience, people aren't so forgiving. But you, you've been so kind to me and to Seth. You gave to us without expecting anything in return. You make me feel like I matter. 
You give me hope, Brandon. And a surprising amount of butterflies, she admitted with a sparkle in her amber eyes. Just to be clear, you helped me believe in love again. I kissed you because I wanted to, Brandon. As a matter of fact, I still want to. Her answer was just what he needed to hear. He reached for her hand and asked, May I? When she nodded, he wrapped his palm around hers and gave a gentle squeeze. He wondered if the tingles going up his arm were traveling up hers, too. There was no denying the spark of electricity between them. The moment was nearly perfect. Even if they didn't have everything figured out yet, they would get there eventually. Together. But first, there was something he needed to remedy. With bated breath, he lifted a hand to her face and brushed some strands of her hair back. His eyes zeroed in on her lips, noting how they parted in response to his gaze. I want to kiss you again, too. Good, because if you don't, I will. But this time, I'll let you make the first move. Brandon grinned. He leaned in close until the sweetness of her breath filled his senses. Their surroundings seemed to blur, as if the moment was happening in slow motion. He bit his lip in anticipation. Their first two kisses had been good, but he had a feeling this one would be the best. Third time was the charm, right? Slowly and gently, he traced a path with one finger down Bria's cheek to her chin, tilting it up. In the next instant, he captured her mouth with his. Her lips drew him in, urging him to savor the feel and taste of her. The intensity of the kiss made Brandon's body heat up and his head spin. He wished he could freeze time and commit all the details to memory. He had a feeling he'd be writing even more awesome kissing scenes from now on. Maybe he could convince Bria to practice with him some more. For research purposes, of course. He had a feeling she wouldn't mind. There was also another person who didn't seem to mind their display of affection. A soft yelp of excitement came from behind. Brandon and Bria broke apart and leaned over the couch to see Seth grinning up at them, giving his approval with two enthusiastic thumbs up. The three of them broke out in laughter, the harmonious sound filling Brandon with the wonderful knowledge that God had answered the little boy's prayers. Not long ago, Seth had whispered in his ear and promised to pray for them to be together again. Their family had been reunited, and Brandon intended for their union to last this time. Chapter 24 Bria Bria absentmindedly traced her finger on Brandon's hand as it rested on the center console between them. Peace flooded her heart as she felt the warmth of his skin and enjoyed the freedom of touching him. A week had passed since they had had their magical third kiss. Since their reunion that evening, she and Brandon had decided to take things one day at a time. They had explained to Seth that things were going to be different from now on. Different and better. God had given them each other, and they would be spending a lot of time together again. The cause of Richard's behavior also came to light soon after, through Darren's cop friend, they learned that Richard had been under suspicion for accepting bribes related to his legal cases. He was now awaiting his own trial and was permanently out of the running for mayor. While Richard's threats no longer hung over her head, neither she nor Brandon had brought up the fact that they were still legally married. She figured they would address the issue in time, and she would let Brandon take the lead on that. He did a wonderful job of leading when she gave him the chance to do so especially with initiating their kisses. Today, he had gone ahead and planned a special evening for the three of them. The sun was beginning to set as they drove along Highway 1 up to Mount Tamalpai. They were keeping their promise to Seth to look for shooting stars. He was happily sitting in the back seat with his nose stuck in a book. He glanced up occasionally and smiled whenever Bria looked at him. If it were possible, he was probably more thrilled than she was to have Brandon back in their lives. The car slowed as they headed through the entrance gate into the parking lot. They parked and exited the vehicle with blankets, flashlights, and a telescope in hand. Brandon led the way to an open clearing where they set up their gear and sat down to wait. Wow! Seth exclaimed as he took in the sight around them. It's amazing, isn't it? Brandon chimed in. He ruffled Seth's hair and pointed out the city lights that illuminated the layer of fog below them. 
Bria listened in on their conversation with a heart so full of joy it threatened to burst. Even though the scenery around them was breathtaking, even though the scenery around them was breathtaking, she found the sight of the two blonde heads beside her even more amazing. How was it that God was so good to her? Brandon turned to her with a curious look. What are you thinking about? She leaned on his shoulder and received a kiss upon her head. Just how happy I am right now? That there's nothing missing from this moment. I have everything I'd ever want right here. Is that so? He placed an arm around her shoulder and pulled her close. Are you sure there's nothing else you want? Nope, nothing at all. In the dimness, she thought she saw a mysterious smile appear on his face. His tone remained calm, though, so she didn't think much of it. She settled herself into the crook of his arm as they looked up at the darkening sky. They spent the next two hours patiently waiting for a shooting star to appear. Seth bounced in excitement when the first flash of light shot through the darkness, falling in rapid speed to the earth. Was that it? Was that a shooting star? Yes, buddy, it was. Your first shooting star. Bria reached over to pat her son's leg. Was it what you expected? Even better. Bria smiled. She had to agree with Seth. This, her life right now, had turned out even better than she'd ever hoped for. It truly is. Silence fell upon them as they continued to gaze up at the night sky. After a while, she lay down on the thick blanket they had brought, with Seth on Brandon's left side and Bria on his right. A couple of yawns later, her son dozed off. Brandon covered Seth with his jacket, then turned onto his stomach to face Bria. Do you mind if we stay a little longer? She shook her head. Not at all. I like it here. It's a lot less crowded than the place we went to back in college. That's probably because the hill you took me to was a makeout spot. Oh my goodness, now that you mention it, I think you're right. She chuckled, then grew serious. I hope I didn't give you the wrong idea back then. Don't worry, I didn't expect you to get anywhere near me after I touched Poison Ivy. Bria picked up on the disappointment in his voice. Thankfully, there is no Poison Ivy around tonight so we can make out as much as we want to. Brandon glanced to his right where Seth was sleeping. Maybe not as much as we want to. He tapped her nose gently before sitting up. I think there's something we need to clear up first, though. Bria rose onto her elbows at the change in his tone. Whatever he wanted to say sounded serious. What is it? He released a long breath. I know we decided not to look too far ahead into the future, but I want to make sure you know where I stand. I don't want there to be any doubt about us, especially for Seth's sake. What are you saying, Brandon? I'm saying that even though we're technically already husband and wife, I want you to know that I love you and I love Seth. He reached into the pocket of his shorts and pulled out a small object. With his other hand, he flipped on a flashlight. Bria gasped and sat up straight. The red beam from the special astronomy flashlight lit up a ring box in Brandon's palm. The diamond solitaire sitting inside glowed red like a crimson shooting star. Brandon, what are you doing? He took the ring and slipped it onto her finger. This is for you, Bria. Will you marry me? Again? For real this time. Happy tears filled her eyes as she looked at the ring and then at Brandon. Yes? She wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed him, knocking him to the ground in her enthusiasm. Their legs intertwined as she landed on top of him. She pulled back and cradled his face in her hands, satisfied to rest in his arms like this for the rest of her life. The thought that she would be able to caused her tears to spill over. Now, everything was as it should be. She and Seth had the love and commitment of the most wonderful man. Oh. She needed to tell her son the good news. She pulled Brandon up as she exclaimed, Seth, wake up, buddy. Huh? Seth sat up and rubbed his eyes. Are there more shooting stars? Bria turned to Brandon, who had a huge grin on his face. Do you want to tell him or should I? May I? She nodded, motioning for Seth to join them. Mr. B has something important to tell you. 
Brandon placed a hand on Seth's shoulder and announced, Your mom and I are getting married. That means we, the three of us, are going to be our own family. What do you think, Seth? No way! Yes way! Bria exclaimed. Are you okay with this? Okay? It's amazing! This is the best night ever! I knew God would answer my prayer! She looked at Seth in wonder. You've been praying for this? Yeah. I know Mr. B loves us, and I love him. I asked God to help you love him, too. Bria swiped at her eyes. Her tears were really falling now. She reached for Seth's hand and squeezed it. Well, your prayers worked, bud. She turned in Brandon's direction. I do love him. I love both of you so very much. Yay! With a joyful shout, Seth leapt into their arms. The three of them tumbled to the ground, their laughter filling the vast expanse of the sky. Epilogue Brandon Brandon added one more sentence to his story before typing the end. He leaned back with a satisfied smile. Yep, he had finally gotten the ending right, on his first try, no less. What had changed? He'd like to think his writing skills had improved over the years, but he knew better. The real reason for his inspiration were the people sitting beside him on the sofa, his wife and son. Life sure had changed in the last month since he and Bria had remarried in a small ceremony with his family by their side. He had also officially adopted Seth as his own. His days and nights now were so much fuller and sweeter, and his heart held more love than he had ever known. He noticed Bria looking over his shoulder at his laptop screen. You're welcome to be the first person to read this if you like. She pursed her lips. Thanks, but I don't know if romance books are for me. Not for you. Brandon feigned hurt. You do know you're married to a romance author, right? I know, which means I don't need a fictional happy ending when I already have a real one. He grinned to see a sparkle in Bria's eyes. That's a good answer. Can I read it, Dad? Seth piped up on the other side of Brandon. Hmm, maybe when you're older, and only if you want to read about kissing. Brandon joked. There's quite a bit of it in this story. Seth's face scrunched up in disgust. Ew, there's already too much kissing in our family. Never mind. He added before returning to his book. I beg to differ. Brandon murmured into Bria's ear. There can never be too much kissing. Especially when it counts as research, she replied with a wink. I think I know what we'll be doing tonight after someone goes to sleep. Oh, definitely, Brandon promised. Tonight and every night for the rest, let me guess, she cut in with a soft laugh. The rest of our lives? He pulled her close and murmured, yes, for the rest of our lives. He sensed a smile upon her lips as he kissed her. Despite Bria's dislike for romance books, he knew she found his sentimental sayings amusing. This one-liner was obviously no exception. It might have been his cheesiest line to date, but he didn't mind. He specialized in cheesy. He was a romance author, after all. One who had finally discovered the best happily ever after. His own. Thank you for listening to this audiobook. To check out Lewin Y. Ho's other books, please visit her website at lewinho.com. The end. Thank you so much for listening to this audiobook. To find out more about Lewin Y. Ho's other books, please visit her website at lewinho.com. And be sure to subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified when a new audiobook releases.